Hey friends, it's podcast survey time. That's right. In order to find the greatest advertisers for you, our greatest listeners, we'd like to learn a little bit more about you. So head on over to podsurvey.com slash bomb. And when you're there, you can take a quick anonymous survey and that'll help us fill in some of the blanks. Let us know what you're into, you know, other podcasts and shoes. I, I don't know. I don't actually know. I don't know what they're asking, but just a quick anonymous survey. That way we can show advertisers just how great you, the listener, are, is, is are, is and are. Plus, once you've completed the survey, you can choose to enter for a chance to win a $100 Amazon gift card. Terms and conditions apply. Again, that's podsurvey.com slash bomb. Thanks for your help. Hello, it's the Giant Sick Cast. Yeah, sick. here here on this uh, Tuesday, February the twenty sixth. The Giant Slash Cast, two thousand and nineteen. Here what? to talk about all your hottest what? fan fiction. Ugh. Getting it on. Mine is, is dropping that slash bomb on all y'all. Inspector Gadget slash Mickey no. Rourke. Oh, this is sick. Yeah, he's got that Go Go Gadget extender. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a lot of that's. Uh, what does Mickey Rourke bring to the table? Uh, fine acting chops. Just look at. Have you seen the wrestler? Have you yeah. seen the wrestler? It's a really yeah. good wrestling have you played movie. Played Rogue. Yeah. What was it? Rogue Warrior. Rogue Warrior. Yeah. What's Mickey Rourke brings a lot of stuff. What's, what's that about? Uh, mm. It's about uh, April Cuss- Fool, motherfucker, Cussin. and cu- yeah, it's about cussing and shooting, <laughs> like most games. <laughs> Nine that- that- fifty said, "Blood of the Sand." The cuss shooter is really a dying genre. You don't. Like now, Both Storm like tried to yeah like extend the life of the cuss shooter. I feel like another chunk of time like, when, of they, when that Duke, remastered edition came out. Duke is the patron saint of the cuss shooter. Yeah, um, but and you know you had Bullet Storm, you had Matt or not Matt Hazard, uh, Rogue Warrior, Rogue Warrior, Fifty Cent Blood in the Sand. It was like a very mid to late 2000s era where you could get away with some more cusses than usual. It was like games that got green lit on the tail end of rap rock or something. Yeah. Like, a, yeah, okay, I, sure. I don't know. Like it, so like that attitude kind of just carried forward a little bit further than it should have. Like we were getting there with games like Black. Like the military, like not Call of Duty shooters were kind of pushing us in that edgy direction. Yeah. And I feel like we got to the edge, went over it. And now all the shooters are just like... We're telling jokes and kind of like Apex. Look at Apex. Yeah, and, yeah. It's like know, it's a ragtag group of characters that are just like here to have a good time. Yeah. And by the way, they're murdering each other <laughs> over and over again. But hey, but no cusses. Vacation Hudson available <laughs> now in Call of Duty Blackout. He's wearing a fun shirt. Uh, I just had to confirm that Rogue Warrior came out after the wrestler. <laughs> okay. After after yeah. after Mickey Rourke's tour de force return to form award win, it, well, he actually didn't win anything, did he? It's, I but would like to think he won something. Highly somewhere. critically praised, <laughs> yeah. yeah, acclaimed, yeah, com- comeback. He, he followed up prestige film, the first movie I ever gave five stars to at my college newspaper. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so you knew it had to be good. Uh, Whoa, I might have read that paper, Ben. <laughs> I might have picked it up after his prestigious star turn and comeback. He went straight to Rogue Warrior. I wonder, because Rogue Warrior, I feel like, was in development for a, th- a billion years, wasn't it? <laughs> I, so maybe they Maybe had, he laid those lines down in, like, that's two, right. maybe, 2006. Maybe he laid them down when he needed it the most. Yeah. And then the wrestler came out, and they are like, oh, we need to finish up this game, because yeah. Mickey Rourke, very hot right now. Uh, what's he been up to lately? Kicking it. Kicking wasn't it. He, getting it he all in an Inspector Iron Gadget, Man. Apparently. Yeah, he was the bad guy you know, he, in Iron he, Man. That guy is well, almost was, like Inspector Gadget, because he can extend his arms. Oh, yeah, he's got, like, whip arms. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, that, that was the bad Iron Man, though. Yeah. Was, uh, okay. Also, that was, like, ten years ago. <laughs> oh, God. Or something. Uh, was he in one of those, like, VH1 Celebrity House shows? Or am I imagining that? Mm, that seems like... <laughs> that. I, I'm going to say yes. I don't okay. know, but I'm going to say yes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, yeah, Iron Man 2 came out in 2010. Oh, fuck. Uh, he was in The Expendables. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to say his 
IMDb page reads like that of a working actor. Yeah, oh yeah. Because he's in a lot of stuff, and I've never heard of any of it. What about uh, Double uh, double Team? The, double Team? Yeah, it's the, that's the... Um, double uh, Team. Uh, Dennis Rodman. Oh, that's... Uh, Mickey Rourke. A late 90s joint. Yeah, Kickbox is a tiger in a minefield. Okay. Whoa. Uh, Ooh, wow, Dennis Rodman's got... Game. A, <laughs> a hairdo going on. Diplomatic immunity. Yeah. His hair is green. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. In that movie, I remember His enjoying all over the place. Double Team a great deal. I also have not seen it since it was released. But yes, there's a, a you have to kickbox a tiger in a minefield, and they put crosses down to mark where the mines are. And then is the the line is I moved some of your crosses, and then it turns out the crosses were not on the mines anymore. And I believe that's how Mickey Rourke gets blown up. I forget. Well, I hope. Sorry to spoil okay. I, the end of. I was, Great. Or, I was now literally never, typing now in going to watch it. You right now. God damn it. I still get the DVDs. I don't think oh, it's on yeah. streaming. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. That's that's uh that's part of the Criterion collection. <laughs> yeah. Look, man, when you stream things on the internet, they know. Speaking of prestige <laughs> film. Yes. Fantastic. Ben, turn it on. Uh-oh. Oh. I wasn't even talking about that, yeah. but okay. <laughs> All right. Let's just get this out of the way. All right. Here we are. All right. We'll uh, full screen this Detective Pikachu trailer. Have uh, any of any of you have this seen has this? 17 views. Have you seen this yet? What? I haven't. I have not I saw either. A GIF. We're we're looking at the newest Detective Pikachu. Last time we did this, it didn't go well. I'm gonna need more audio. Yeah. Inside this hat. So I made my way to the apartment, and that's when I found you and your stapler gun. Your hallucination. Your hallucination. Ooh, so His voice is so deep. With no memories, who's addicted to caffeine? I could stop oh, whatever I want. Oh, These yeah, are just they choices. are. But it's like you need to turn it way up. What is that? What? what? Ludi Carlo. I don't know. Maybe hair got in too deep. <laughs> Mixed up the wrong crowd, that kind of thing. What? Look, you did a rocket launcher hit a car? No. Look at this, Snorlax. And if you want to oh, they're just going all out. Look at tongue's tongue looked like what about a Kirby's insides. Detective? Ah, my clues! What is all this? Harry is still alive. Case closed, but still open until I solve it. Oh boy. Right. Who is that, Ryan Reynolds? Here it is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Harry faked his own death, or somebody else faked Harry's death. Do you know what that Mewtwo is? Just wait, just wait. The last one doesn't work. No. Guys, I think it's Mewtwo. Oh, is that it? Was that a, like a battle? Whoa, were those Pokemon fighting? Whoa, I guess I didn't consider that the Pokemon will also do what Pokemon do <laughs> yeah. in this. Oh, he's on the float. That's you just had that float. You think he's gonna be on the Goku float too? Yeah, definitely. It's where we figure out it's the same world. Yep. So I'll just do it again. Oh, he's gonna Pikachu does a spirit bomb. It's a whole thing. Hey, bud, what are you doing? I can't do it when people are watching. Get me the hell out of here! Who would? What are you trying to do? Pika, Pika! Ah! Do you like fart lightning or something? That was yeah, pretty much. Wait for it. I like the ninja. Whoa! Uh, Ah! That's very twisty. Mewtwo fucked up. What was? Yeah. There's Mewtwo. Oh, oh, God. oh no, no. Wait. He's on a bike. Quick, get in front of him. Stop. Oh no. He's going down hard, Tim. Should have worn a helmet. <sighs> All right. That wasn't was quite it? as disturbing as the last one. Oh, that was beautiful. Ludi Colo's in it. Oh, Kingdom Hearts summary. Click that. No, nope. no, 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 no. Let's. That's all. That's all the YouTube we got for today. All right, turn it off, Ben. That looked pretty good. Yeah, actually, that's what I'm that, saying. That yeah, like a fun action. Yeah, romp. It, it totally looks like a competent film. Yeah, like it doesn't does not look like trash. At, at I like all. the way the Pokemons look. Yeah, you know, now that I've adjusted, now that I've yeah. kind of realized what Pokemon might look like in real life, and mm -hmm. I've accepted it, it's a lot less jarring watching them. Yeah, in, in motion. it looks so much better than anything I've seen from Aladdin. Oh, yeah. That Snorlax, I just want to hug it. I do want to hug it. I just want to cuddle up next to it. Mewtwo, you know, looks too scaly, too leathery, but it's great. Yeah. What's up with Mewtwo? Ludicolo runs he's, a coffee he's, shop. He was a genetically... Is he a bad guy? He, no. Yeah. We made him bad, yeah. Brad. Humanity made it. Like if you're going by yeah. the lore of the... The Weapon X program. Like, there, there are no bad Pokemon. There are only bad... Um, 
trainers. trainers. Okay. Yeah. Yes, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Charmander's trainer tried to just leave it out in the rain. Pokemon Fuck dick. Fuck Pokemon Fuck. is what, what you make of it. Mm-hmm. Giovanni's like a scumbag. But How did ma- that guy ever get a gym be- leader position? I mean, just it's a reflection on the real world, Ben. Look yeah. at who's at the top. That's true. You think the... El- I, I really want to know more about the politics around like the Elite Four and the Gym Trainer Association. Well, I think one of them has tried to kill Professor Oak <laughs> multiple times. Of the Elite Four? Yeah, the old lady. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think they her. have some history. Yeah. She's like the ghost one, Agatha. Yeah. Yeah, um, they like used to be a thing, I bet. Yeah. And then it went bad. She killed his Pokemon and, and, or something. And and took she, him as ghosts. she's a ghost? She's, she's into ghosts. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Is, like, whatever. That's Like more than Mr. Fuji even. Yeah. Mm. Mr. Fuji's into throwing salt and stuff. So I won't hear otherwise. Some telescopes and yeah. whatnot. When's that coming out? May. Oh. Very soon. The movie month. Yes. Of May. So okay. I've heard a lot of people say that this is kind of the test movie for like a larger Pokemon universe. You know, a more like standard, like, here's just Pokemon Blue, the Wait. movie. We're just kinda. gonna do a Pokemon cinematic universe. I'm yeah, so that's what, they're, that. that's what they're kind of mm. no up PCU. Here. They're getting Jeremy Piven. Okay, <laughs> all right. Eventually, they're gonna have to like kill off some people. It's gonna be a big controversy over who dies. Uh, once you know Ash gets all eight of the gym badges, he snaps and half the Pokemon die. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. mean, an actor can't stay ten forever. No, it's true. Yeah. Was that was the dude in that movie playing Ash? No, no. no. Is Ash a character in that? Maybe. Bl- Blue, I guess, would be like your typical red, red, red. Yeah, blue's the rival, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gary. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're all kind of the Gary. Same. I don't want to get into this. I'm I'm immediately backing off from this. I just have another hour long conversation about Gary. Uh, I yeah, I don't know. That looks good. I would probably watch that. I'm pleasantly surprised how okay and every great everything looks. Yeah. Yeah. The designs could be a lot worse. It could be a lot scarier looking, but hey, it's fine. The CGs looks okay. Yeah, I like, the, fine. I, I like the way the Pokemon yeah. look in the real world. Yeah, I it think seems, like, seems like a good compromise between realistic, but also not, you know, yeah. Yeah, they still look like the game characters, but in a creepy, realistic fashion. Now back this up to here. Okay. What if they were making this movie a long time ago and instead of CG, they were Muppets? <laughs> I'd, still be, on board. I would still, I would like still be on board. I would still be on board. And good. Dennis Hopper was in it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Emmett Otter, Jug okay. Band. Okay. Okay. But here's sure. Here's, Only if that means Greninja will have a song like Kermit did. Definitely. All definitely. Right. I have one concern. All right. So there was one scene there where was that Machoke or Machamp? Machamp. Uh, directing traffic. Machamp. Yes. Uh, was in there, kind of du- directing traffic. It looked like. Uh huh. Does that mean he is a deputized like member of the police force? Is he earning yeah. money? Is he like oh. sentient? Is is there a trainer working over him as he works for the department, or does he technically work for the government? Like, Some cops like, ride horses. Sometimes dogs sniff out drugs. So I just look at it as something wait, like that. Uh, Pokemon oh. animals. Yeah. Or are they yes. people? They're animals. Can a Pokemon have a job? Yeah. Yes. But yeah, but so but can an animal. So can Service a dog. animals have, okay. a, have jobs in, in a technical sense, if not a societal one. Do Pokemon get or vice versa? social security numbers? No. Do they, do they live in a stable? Do they deserve them? That's a much different conversation. Do they live in a stable? Um, or they live in a or Pokeball. A barn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pokeball is like the barn. Of so the, do they just like yeah. work eight hours and then go back in the ball and then work eight hours and go I, back in the ball? What do drug dogs do at the airport when they're done sniffing drugs? They probably get pet and yeah. get some treats. No, you're not supposed to pet them. Yeah, you can't. Yes. Well, not the, the, the people who work there might like give them mm. a little, just like behind the ear a little, okay. you know. All right. It's like good boy. A little, little petting is always good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, then. You guys have any petting this weekend? Uh, uh, very, heavy. very heavy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's raining, yeah. so you can't really yeah. go outside. What else is there to do? Yep. Except get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's right. Uh, <laughs> that's a challenge. You guys got any games you want to talk about? What? What? No, we're I talking don't know. about getting it, Brad. Getting games, right? Speaking of the bad Iron Man. Tell me no, about no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then. Woo! Uh, what's new this week? Trials, is trials Rising. Is Trials, is trials yeah. the one new thing uh, this week? Is, uh, well, uh, that, that to, passes our bar. Well, r- for right now, I mean, I'm pl- also playing Toe Jam and Earl, but that's okay. not okay. that's not out yet. Can't, uh, so can't we'll, discuss. We'll talk about that some other time. I think Trials is it. Trial, yeah, Trials is out. Uh, I mean, also, you know, Dead or Alive is out on the first, and <laughs> okay. we, we have a quick look of that up yes. on the site. Okay. Um, yeah, that seems cool. 
Yeah, I, uh, you know, as a as someone who is never going to be a great Dead or Alive player, uh, I still enjoy Dead or Alive quite a bit. Yeah, uh, of, the, of the mainstays, that's probably the yeah. one I've kind of put the least time into, but it yeah. seems competent. The story mode seems <laughs> all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's a nightmare the way you kind of want it to be. Yeah. Uh, but I just, you know, it's, it's fast, it's mashy, Fan it's fun. Uh, in, in, in the good way, but also in the bad way. Yeah, so that's the thing, man. Like they, well, yeah, for now it's fine. It seems like they've uh, fine. Uh, it, it feels like they're trying to have it both ways, and they're trying to they're trying to play like people on both sides of this issue are getting played. Yes. I feel by the comments out of Tecmo when they talk about like, oh, well, you know, we, we have to scale stuff back because of how it feels in the West. Anyway, here's costume DLC that's going to be the nastiest, grimiest shit you ever done. See, you know, it's like there's costumes in that game that you can unlock that are some straight. There are some dead or alive costumes, which you know, like I'm whatever. It is what it is. I I don't have a huge problem with it. No. Uh, it's I think it's kind of dumb at some point, and I think it gets in the way of people appreciating the game as a game because they get hung up on like. Boob City. Yeah, and that's um, that's exactly what happened with that. I don't know if you saw that Evo Japan stuff. Yeah, I heard about it. So yeah. they ended up like what they were trying to promote the game by bringing out some like some real real life looking. bikini girls. Yeah, and like just having them jump around and you know sure. do very yeah exploitative things. And that was kind of yeah that was kind of my stance on it. It's like you can have that on a stream. I'm not gonna get like riled up and clutch my pearls or whatever. But yeah. it like ruins the legitimacy that you're trying to build around this. Totally. thing as a serious I, it's like that stuff always just feels like pandering in a way that's just like oh you think i'm a fucking idiot yeah like you you think that i'm like complete dog shit and i'm just gonna be like oh yeah the fucking tits <laughs> game dude let's get it she kicks high like all that fucking trash like it's 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 demeaning across the board yeah um <clears throat> in, in that sense where it just feels like they're they think that i am a fucking moron yes I've said it before, but like one of my litmus tests for stuff like that has always been: Would I be embarrassed if people I knew thought I was into this? <laughs> sure, you know what I mean. And for me, uh, Dead or Alive, no, <laughs> I'm into it because that you only play Fame Douglas. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I always unlock Fame Douglas. No, I don't, Fame Douglas is not typically he, a playable yeah, character. Not, I think he showed up as a the, bonus. I was thinking of Zach. Yeah, I, I, I was am, thinking of Zach. Double cr uh, double team. That's right. Mickey Rourke. Zach. <laughs> Oof. Uh, I'm I'm always impressed that DOA is apparently. Respected as a fighting game, well, I, 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 for, I, I considering guess, what the series is known for, yeah, yeah. Like, but like, it's not. I at the end of the day, people seem to like playing it. Yes, there. I feel like there is an, an audience of people that love playing that game. Yeah, I mean, I it's competent to that. Yeah, like it's yeah. not just a vehicle for right, you know. but it's probably still probably not like main stage. Oh yeah, Evo yeah, no, no. popular, right? Yeah. It's, it's a solid like B minus yeah. tier fighting game. Sure, like in terms of popularity, not in terms of execution, not in terms of science. That's yeah. a whole different. Conversation yeah, we're, no we're, we are not prepared to have. Yeah, we haven't haven't run it through the centrifuge yet. Definitely not. They haven't spun it down. Uh, see what's in there. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I get why people would look at that and go, "Like, God, this is grotesque," uh, and and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I just wish that they put the virtual fighter characters in it. I, I wish I, I would trade away if you if you could if I could remove the last three Dead or Alive games in exchange for another Virtua Fighter game, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, me too. Uh, sure. Those games are cool. But Hawk. them having those guest characters in the last DOA was like awesome because it was like, oh, great. I can, it's like kind of a Virtua Fighter game and kind of always like, was. Th here's the last time you're going to see these also, guys. Also, yeah, it was, that, it was that dark feeling of just like, oh man, Sega just isn't doing this sort of stuff anymore and yeah. who you know is, is there anybody at sega who could make another right, virtual it, fighter well, i'm sure anyone could right well, it's just yeah, like, but is I mean, there someone and it's the thing that capcom ran into in the time between street fighter 3 and 4 right. of just like there was no one internally championing championing the franchise <laughs> and, and putting their reputation on the line yeah nobody wanted to take that burden on their shoulders and, and i wonder if if virtua fighter is in the same boat of just sure. like hey here's this revered series that yeah. like you know it doesn't necessarily do like the gigantic gangbusters numbers worldwide uh, which is crazy to me because at one time Virtua Fighter was like the biggest game in Japan, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's been. It seems. Like, I mean, it seems been like a long from time. My perspective. Yeah. That that's it's been a long time. I've like, seen like around the BF2 uh, era, wasn't it? Like yeah, the thing. So it, you're saying they need an Ono? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, sure, but yes, in, in that sense, <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, someone who someone will who's passionate. Yes, who someone who will, who will put it out there and be like, yeah. I mean. I, I will be the one whose career goes down in flames if this crashes and burns because I'm the one who ruined this franchise forever. Sure, let's go. Well, yeah. don't, don't worry. Like, Shenmue 3 is almost out, and then Yu Suzuki can get back to doing 
what matters. What he does matter. Is, it, is that almost out? Oh, no, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, highly, I don't know. Sure. It's it's now DLC for Kingdom Hearts hmm. somehow. Yeah. All right. In the pantheon of games that you never thought would come out. Actually, I think they may have said. I think the release at one of point this year, the right? 2019 was yeah. the target. The, the year of Shenmue. Yes, of course. Uh, who oh, were maybe the, I'll finally like those. <laughs> Yeah, who, this will who, probably be the one. Who were those guest characters? Were they they were VF? Uh, yeah, it was Sarah, uh, Akira, huh. and the blonde there's a third. Is it Jackie? Was Jackie in it? No. Oh, you gotta have Jackie. Well, if you have Sarah, you kind of don't. No, you're right. always they're yeah. they're they, they've diverged joking. over the years. Yeah. But I don't remember who's the drunk old guy. Shun. Shun. Yeah. Shun D. I like Shun D. Yeah. Uh, I I only played as Sarah because Sarah is always or as of VF four became my main. So, yeah. when I say VF characters, just know that I mean Sarah. All right. Fair. Uh, yeah, that's out this week. Yeah. Uh, is, and and is... I'm curious to see what the net code on that thing is like. Mm. Uh, yeah, that test we played on UPF seemed yeah. shaky. Yeah. Yeah. It seemed like it was capable of being good, but no, you know, like a, more likely to find a bad match than some other games with better net code, perhaps. Yep. But, yep. uh, we shall see. Yeah. Um, and uh, then Trials Rising. Yeah, Trials. Yeah. Uh, is back. Yeah. I only played like the first three tracks or mm -hmm. something and kind of dug into like the weird world map thing they have going on. Yeah. I, yeah. The, the flow like, of that game is poor. Yeah. I think. Mm, okay. I uh, guess I didn't get deep enough to see that stuff, but the whole, it seems a little bare bones. It, it, well, I mean, it just seems like some Trials ass trials. So I, I guess like. I'm coming at it from the Trackmania Turbo perspective okay. of that game was really amazing at showing friends leaderboards yeah. and surfacing the idea that like, hey, you are not at the top of your friends leaderboard. Uh -huh. I feel like even Trials Fusion maybe was, I'd have to go back, but I, I seem to remember that being slightly better at this. Sure. This will do that. It will, you know, when you're on the world map, it'll pop a thing out that says, hey, new record on the main menu. There is a thing that'll say like, hey, this person beat you, this person beat you, but it yeah. didn't seem like there was a fast way to click into those races and do them again um to, to kind of retake the top spot like like that stuff didn't seem like it was centralized in a very easy to read place mm. which is how i want to play trials i want to i want to like get better at those levels i want to see if someone's beat me and yeah. and and see it all right there and, and very easily get right back into it and that stuff isn't great they've got like you know the world map has filters and you can filter out events you completed and all this other stuff but that's not quite it you can go into a location. It'll list all the races in a location, so you can at least see if you've beat them uh, in in and gotten the medals you need on them. So there's that, but that's like one button prompt further in than it should be. And so there's just like a little, a lot of little stuff like that. But the game is totally trials. Like yeah. it's it's a fucking trials game. Yeah. Like they took out the tricks. It's trials. That's kind of what I mean. Like they, you know, fusion was about hey, we added a trick system. There's something yeah. new here. This doesn't seem to have a an equivalent of the trick system. Gearboxes. Uh, the feature uh, here loot seems boxes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Like the feature uh, here seems to be hey, we took the tricks out. Yeah, we took the tricks yeah. out and <laughs> and, loot and boxes. did you like Overwatch? Uh, because now it's yeah, got loot boxes the same way that stuff does. Stuff seems a little weird in a mostly offline game. I don't know. Well, it's not. I mean, you can play. Well, you can, but yeah. I, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's it, they've they've put a lot of effort into character customization in a way that's like you're unlocking a ton of stickers that then you can put onto any of the parts you're unlocking. Yeah. So they have you unlock multiples of the same part, and because maybe you want to sticker one up differently. I but I, I have not engaged with that. It doesn't it doesn't interest me. Yeah. Um, beyond like, I made my character dab before a race. Great. When what will be the last game to feature a dab? And, oh gosh. and is it too late? Borderlands Three, it will, not in our <laughs> lives. <laughs> Borderlands Three will have the definitive fucking last hand on the bat for the dab. Does Claptrap have yeah. enough of an arm yes. type oh, aperture yeah. they, to they dab will, with? Actually, no, the it, whole plot of, of Borderlands Three is going to be you're going to have to find better <laughs> arms for Claptrap oh, specifically man. so he can dab God. over the end credits. It's pretty exciting. There is there is an animation of Claptrap dabbing done, yeah. done at Gearbox right now, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah. There's also a yeah. pickle Claptrap. Just yeah, right there in the way that it's a whole thing oh, where you have to go across all of Pandora. The same of the planet, right? Yeah. There's a bunch of restaurants on Pandora, and there's a USB key in each one of the restaurants, and you have to get them all to reassemble the dab. <laughs> the last one that involves some time travel. It's magic, you go to man. like this yeah. weird. There's nights and shit. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm, yeah. Uh, so one of the uh, one of like the, maybe the second event I did loaded a bunch of ghost data in. Like right, the loading screen showed like three other players, and mm -hmm. you can see what they're wearing there. Yep. So there is a yeah, little bit of a showcase for it. Yeah. Those were random players though, mm -hmm. because 
even pre-release, like you and Dan had already played that track before I had, so I'm kind of surprised it wouldn't pull like your ghost data. Well, in because there. the first time in, you want to see a, a meaningful ghost, right? Okay, uh, like somebody so who's done really want, well yeah, at it. If, if 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 the people on your leaderboard are fucking worlds ahead of you, then that ghost is not going to be useful to sure. you. Sure. Uh, or it's not going to be competitive right off the ga- the the bat. So no. they probably want you to work up to the better ghosts or something. Yeah. Uh, they've got a challenge. Uh, Thing. So occasionally it'll trigger. This game reminds me a little bit of Trials Frontier, which was the iOS Trials game, the mm. free iOS Trials game, um, because it's kind of rewarding you for like they found different ways to reward you for going back into levels. Um, and and there's a lot of like gear and currencies and stuff like that that a free to play game would have. Um, so it kind of reminds me of that, which actually I played the shit out of that game mm. for whatever that's worth. Uh, it was a Trials game. Uh, and so this will, you know, sometimes, uh, um, uh, one of the levels will toggle to like this challenger mode. And if you can beat three challengers in a row without doing three restarts, uh, you will get a specific additional loot box, <laughs> Oh, uh, which th- that's the thing is like, I feel like those rewards are bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, uh, I, I don't care enough about the character customization for that to be like, Oh, you did this thing. And now here's a loot box. Yeah. Like that's not, that's yeah. not cool enough. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there are as many bikes or, or uh, I, mm, like you kind of unlock the rhino really quickly, which is like the second bike, and then the third one you don't get until like level forty two. And yeah. then there are other two that you have to buy with currency, and you okay. can buy them with real money if you yeah. want, but the grind is not too bad on <laughs> either on of those. The bikes. And Dan, that, Dan but then saying, that's like the BMX bike and the donkey, the same way that they have had before. Yes. Like the little the tiny bike. Sure. Um, uh Dan was saying it does get pretty grindy after level forty for events. Oh yeah. You have to go back and do stuff over and over to get XP to I'm, unlock new events by I the bet. time you're that high. Yeah. Which sounds eh. yeah, I'm, I'm like level twenty ish or so okay. on PS4. Yeah, uh, Jeff, and... have you played any of the like the, the like three stage? I forgot what to call them, like arena based. Yeah, that's so each each location you're building up to the like kind of heat races. Yeah, where it's like eight people. So this is the same type of multiplayer. They did, did this as like live multiplayer two uh, trials okay. ago. Um, trials Evolution. Yeah, we had the was? you know it's just eight different versions eight, of the same four, track, then and then two. four, then two. What do you think of that stuff? Because I was getting... So you have to do the eight-person one, the four-person one, the two-person one, and then all three, right? No. And once you do all the... Well, I, maybe there's like maybe another tier of it that thing. I haven't yeah. locked, but like once I beat the... the I played some at, at a preview event, and I yeah. remember having to do each individual one and then all three back-to-back, and that's where it killed it for me. Like, that was... That, it seemed, that, that seems like a bit up, much, so. but yeah, I, I, I didn't have that happen. Okay. But may, it, maybe they've separated yeah. it, so like, hey, there's a reason to go back and do this oh, yeah. in some kind of endurance there's challenge. Loot yeah, boxes. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the trials university stuff seems good. Yes, from what so I've seen, they've of it. they've had like hey some they've they've put in some attempts to train people on how to like read the physics and play trials well yeah. in the past. This one is way it's better super that descriptive. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, it it kind of makes you realize that you've got some bad habits. Yes, potentially. Yeah, uh, that seem like they're really dumb in retrospect. Yeah, once somebody says hey don't do this right don't gun the engine constantly right like airtime is bad. Yeah, like the less time you're in the air, the faster your like, times are. Exactly. Be. So that's it's kind like, of the. I want to go fast. So that that's kind of the problem with the Switch version of the game. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. I heard some things. Well, it's it's you know that the Switch does not have analog <laughs> triggers. Sure. And it's a game that really benefits from analog throttle control. Yeah. Like it, it's it's. I'm not going to say it's a must. I mean, it just means like, hey, if you're you're all on or all off, it's going to be a different thing. So what they did do is they put the throttle on the right analog stick. Which doesn't feel good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a. Uh, it it just doesn't feel good. It 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 kind of you you have analog throttle control at that point, but it it doesn't do it the same way a, a proper analog trigger would. Sure. And and also on a performance side, maybe we'll point a camera at this thing. Yeah. Because uh, it it's like the N sixty four version of Trials. It is very fogged in. In a way that, I kinda, like, I kind of want to see what that looks like. It's weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> so you don't, weird. You know, it's like that first level has trains and all that other stuff, yeah. but it's like they you, they f- they put some fog in there. I've not huh. played a ton of the Switch versions. Does so. it run at sixty FPS? Uh, it it, it so try I mean, to. I don't think the PS4 version is uh, like yeah, the rock PS4 steady. Version's kind of hitchy. Yeah, not bad at all by normal game standards, but in a trials game, like when you first load into a level and you're you know because sometimes you'll cross a certain point and it'll have like some effect, like oh there was a big explosion here yeah. or whatever. Like as it's like loading in that explosion or whatever it is, there's like a split second yes. hitch yes. before it fires it off. Yeah. And, and then you're and, like, oh, fireworks, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then again, in most games, like, whatever, but... 
trials, the split yeah. second timing and and, and also, accuracy you need in a trials game. That's not great. The thing is that only happens the first time. Mm. And once oh, you kind so of restart, restart it, oh that sucks. It doesn't happen again. Yeah. So it has just like the on the first load, it that's, just is hitchy. And I think the load times are pretty long on mm. PS4. Yeah. Like that's a game that really benefits from just banging it out. Yes. yes. Uh, and and you kind of don't always have the opportunity to do that because yeah. I, I feel like you're you're if you're not navigating the menus you're waiting for a load time and stuff like that so yeah. i wish it was a little more streamlined but you know it is more trials and i like trials so uh it's been a while does the uh pro controller for switch have analog no. oh okay no. even then okay yeah uh who's the uh the, like the mc of the university stuff professor fat shady yeah who's, i think i think he was someone just out of the trials community that's, that's that what they i was brought gonna in say. like a yeah. couple of games that's, ago that's what i was gonna say that like that really so he like narrates the all the university lessons like yeah. he's got kind of a boisterous personality like he's he there i'm pretty I sure that I, oh at the yeah. event yeah. okay i want to say they brought him out on stage You're right, three did. also yeah. um so he's just like a, a dude who's really good at trials from the community, and I think they, I think they may have brought him in at this point. Right, I'm but, sure he, he may I, very well. I, work my there. understanding was that he just was an enthusiastic trials yeah, player who is now a part of that, that team. That just, but that, I, I don't know. That stood out to me, like coming right off of Apex and like Shroud being out there talking about how he went in and advised them on that game. Was yeah. just like it seems like the ultimate logical conclusion of hardcore communities forming around really technical games. Right. That the people who are best at those games just end up coming in and working the on them. Influencers were influencing us, but now they're influencing the games. Totally. What? It's weird. Weird. Uh, yeah, I, so I, you know, I, I get why some people are, are really taken aback by the, the kind of loot box presentation of Trials because like, like on all of it builds up to that. Yeah. And it, it gets down to like, okay, well now I unlocked a new headlight. I got a headlight out of this loot box. And it's, so it's just like, you, it's all cosmetic stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then you can sell the cosmetic stuff for more gears, which are the gears you would use to buy the new bikes. Huh. So you can just oh, kind of flip well, that stuff cool. and and use that to grind out the the other stuff faster. That seems kind of generous. It, it, well, it, I don't know the generous is the word I'd use, but it like I'd say the monetization of that game seems reasonable unless you really care about the cosmetic end of it, which right. I don't. So yeah. it, it's I, I feel like I've just been getting. Tons of loot boxes and not even opening them, and then opening them all at once and going like, "Great, a bunch of stickers. I'm never going to apply to anything. Awesome, yep, totally." Um, so maybe I, I if think they had gone a little more all out, a little weirder with that stuff, just to like visually, maybe sure. it, it would have been a little more cool if you had like crazy different riders and really different extravagant bikes and stuff. But well, they, they also uh, yeah, kind the, of generic. The kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, like the the gold edition comes with like a samurai helmet for your character, right? And like there, yeah. there's a little bit of weird stuff in there, but I don't know how crazy. It yeah, gets. so there's there's little stuff in there. I got a shiny jacket. It's very shiny. But again, I just don't uh, feel like there are that many opportunities to show that stuff off to other right. people. Like, it's just not that kind of game. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is a trials kind of game. Yeah. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it coming out and, and more people on my friends list playing it yeah. so I can kind of get into that end of it because I think that's the yes. that's the reason you play trials. Totally. Um, but, yeah, that, that said, I, I do think that a lot of the out-of-game experience stuff I wish it was way more streamlined yep. than it is. Totally. Uh, you guys mentioned last week off mic that you've been playing Wargroove. Yeah. And we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, totally. Because I, I put yes. that game down after the quick look, and I was glad to hear you guys were playing it because I wanted to get back to it. Yeah, Wargroove is fucking hard, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's where it kind of broke down for me was like, I, we talked about it in the quick look, I, I was having trouble with the campaign and I thought it was just because I was bad. Mm -hmm. But then I went and looked at some reviews and like people think that thing is basically unfair. It's it's very rough. Like it is, it is basically like full on people just saying like, dude, the computer cheats in this game. <laughs> like that's the kind of tone mm. that yeah. I was getting out of it. Yeah, so I was, I was a big Advance Wars fan. Um, played all of them, beat the campaigns on all of them, would do like the War Room stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, really liked those games, really wanted another one. Uh, Tiny Metal, was it? Tiny Metal, yeah. Tiny Metal came out, didn't really do it for yeah, me. Same. It just kind of had was a bad missing. tile feel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sure. like didn't have a character. I like, had like well, it really long cutscenes yeah. that just I didn't Yeah, did that right. like, did yeah. even have commanders? I don't think it It had did. commander like characters, but they didn't really do anything other than just be a character in the story. Okay. Like yeah. Wargroove is really good about making it very like commander centric. Yep. Like, totally. The gameplay because they changed the uh, flow of the entire battle so Completely. well. Completely. Yeah. yeah. Um and so when I picked this up, I had been hearing more positive things about this um than than Tiny oh, Metal. Yeah. And yeah, they totally <laughs> did a really good job of nailing that Advance Wars feel with also kind of some key changes here and there, like mm -hmm. on how buildings work. 
Buildings yeah. are way more important now where in advanced wars it was just a means for income, yeah. but now you can heal your units off of them. So holding them strategically is like way more important. There's fewer of them, I feel like, in general. So you're Definitely. kind of fighting over them more often. I don't know how far you guys are in the campaign. I'm about I, as far as we got to in the quick look okay. because I'm just bashing my head against my switch because it's so <laughs> infuriating. Punishing. Where was yeah, that? I, yeah. uh, it's probably the, uh, maybe two missions into Act 3. Yeah, it's, okay. not, it's not long after you start getting flying units for the first time. Yes. Okay, I yeah, I just got into Act Three. Okay, um, did you do the one where you fight vampires? Okay, that's, that's basically where we left off. Okay, yeah, um, it's rough, man. I had a forty, and because so, I realized, um, you know, thinking back on Advance Wars, it was very easy in that game to just get kind of an economic advantage and then pump out like medium tanks definitely. and just yeah. roll over. It the was definitely person. a strategy to turtle up, kind of just like get the. AI at bay just to build up your income and then buy the super tanky units to steamroll over them. But in, in this, it's pretty, pretty hard to fucking do that. Totally. You have to like really kind of diversify your units. You yeah. have to position really well. You have to really slowly push. I feel like ra matches of this campaign are way, way longer than any sort of Advance Wars campaign levels mm -hmm. I remember. I spent, I was in a 45, maybe 55 minute car ride playing one campaigns that first one where you fight the vampires um and i had gotten them down to basically just their stronghold and i did one wrong move i moved my commander far too far oh, i had a man. huge economic lead army lead and then my commander just died totally and like having having like a bunch oh. of unseen units come out of nowhere and just dogpile your yeah. commander and then you just lose a mission that you spent 45 minutes on it uh, was really frustrating like i really yeah. like the game i i appreciate yeah, it does so many things right Definitely. Yeah, I appreciate the difficulty in a way like, you know, there there's an arcade mode and a puzzle mode yeah. that each have difficulty sliders. So like, I could see myself wanting to get really good at this, but I just feel so beaten back by the game. It's like, no, you're not good enough. Yeah. Um, there's a couple issues around the kind of readability of the units for me, like, because every faction is the same. All the units are mm -hmm. the same. It's just the commanders that are different. But oh, okay. each but each type of unit per faction has a totally different sprite and a different name. Yeah. So it's kind of, I mean, you can usually tell, like, okay, yeah. that's their cavalry, that's their, you know, spearman unit. Battle pup. Yeah, but some, sometimes that stuff just gets lost, you know, like, especially looking at just, like, lists of units. So yeah. I kind of wish they standardized that stuff a little bit better, and those tiny little head icons they use for, like, strengths and weaknesses are not mm -hmm. enough. No, yeah, that's that's really clumsy to read, and it doesn't seem like they're always ordered in similar yeah. ways, and so it's, there's just, yeah, I agree. Is there's that stuff that would do better issues. on a TV or monitor compared to the Switch no, screen? No, it's, 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 it's more just they just don't show enough yeah. like okay. UI issues. Okay. Yeah. Um, it actually does scale pretty well between, like, the TV and Switch view are different. Like, it actually oh. scales things in and out based yeah. on what you're doing. Uh, I also really like the the positioning stuff is is really cool of like how you can get critical yes. how every unit yeah. has a crit condition the where crit it's like stuff is, is two pikemen is that an advanced force thing or do they add that no I think that's a, an addition to okay because that's that's my favorite thing in the whole game yeah. is, is every unit having a specific setup that you can go for to get a crit yeah and it totally incentivizes you to like okay I'm gonna you know start out with I'm always gonna build pikemen in twos because I yep. always want them next to each other and I'm always gonna you know. Like have my battle pups near each other, even though they're scout units. I want to move them in a pack because if they're in a pack, they attack better. And yeah, it just it adds levels to the advanced wars type of game that I really think are cool. Yeah, it's just goddamn hard. Yeah, have you, either of you guys tried the multiplayer at all? No, I was gonna say like the core design seems mm -hmm. like it's really got legs. It's really just yeah, the difficulty of the AI yeah, in the campaign. I, so I wonder if the multiplayer is like where this game will kind of like last. Mm -hmm. I hopped into a match. Uh, and it it went about like maybe twenty minutes, and okay. it seemed fairly even, just me against like a, another human being. Yeah, but it was pretty mirrored of like here's the same layout on both sides. Uh, buildings are the same. You get X amount of gold, uh, and that was that was pretty fun. Like uh, we were pretty even for the most part. Was it real time? Uh yeah. Do you know if there's like an asynchronous kind of turn based mode where you can play with somebody over like a long period of time? I don't completely remember that's what i always wanted from advanced wars was a kind of like battle by, play by mail, play by mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally yeah. where you could just play over the course of a couple weeks or something yeah yeah but, that, that game's cool yeah it's got it's got some issues but yeah i, I want to get back to that yeah i think as, as far as like re both they they did they did the thing which is so hard to do when you're making like a fan service game of keeping that original feel but also adding a little bit of your own twist yeah, to it totally. that makes it feel unique yeah. and I really, yeah, it's cool. It's yep, a cool game. Totally. Uh, 
Who else got game? Man, I haven't been playing anything new. I've just been playing Apex. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I, still at the I, I finally grind. got back uh, onto Apex 1, 2, back to back. Nice. With, with I, Red I, Strangers. I did the opposite of what you did. Like, you burned through Anthem and I kept playing Apex because I didn't want to play Anthem. And now yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> forcing myself to finish it. Yeah, I got, uh, I got the Anthem out of my life. Uh, uh, I've kind of hit that level of, of uh, hero level where I'm not really getting anything new anymore. So I'm looking forward to the battle pass. Totally. Uh, Which is I, soon. I feel like I'm already committed at this point that I will most like if it's if it's in line if it's even close to what like Fortnite or Dota have done with their battle passes. I'm like locked in totally. on it. Totally. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. What do you think of the new gun, the Havoc? It's, I have only I, used it like I, once. I, I, okay. I passed over one because I already had weapons. I knew I wanted. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe that says it all. But I just uh, you know it's. it's it's hard to want to try a, a gun in a game like that because yeah. like every moment is so serious. Sure, you're like, oh, I'm gonna fuck around with this gun. Like, no, I'm I got this wingman. I'm gonna keep that. And yeah, is this it's, it's class as an AR, right? Yeah, I, I believe uh, so. like an AR yeah. with spin up time sounds crappy to me, but I can't uh, say for sure. I've I've only used it once. I like it from a d design perspective of having two hop ups yeah, for that's, it. That's cool. That opens kind of an yeah. avenue of like, okay, we're gonna get some weird guns. Well it's down kinda the like line. it's it's a hopeful gun, right? You pick it up and yeah. you're like, oh I, yes. I, I better find one of these two yeah. hop ups or else I'm stuck with the spin up. There, the, most of I feel like most of the guns in the game that take some kind of mod like that are like that. I think like the peacekeeper is the only one that if I pick it up I'm happy even if I don't find the thing. Mm. Yeah. But like the devoted well Wingman's also pretty good by itself. Like I'm not landing headshots anyway, so who cares? But uh, right. but yeah, like the triple take, you definitely need. Yeah, that. The triple and take the, is weird. The devotion, like a, you really yeah, want the devotion, it. The devotion, the devotion, it can put out a lot of damage yeah. if you spin it up. But it's yeah, it's not great. late game. You're not getting those chances to spin it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've actually gone like a complete 180 on the guns that I've been enjoying in that game. I'm all about the auto shotgun and the R99 really? light machine gun. Huh. Oh wow! Like I don't know what it was. It was just like. I think it was two games back to back where I dropped and like found the R99 and the auto shotgun and I was just doing work with it and like huh. I I it really made me appreciate the game because I was like okay I'm just gonna go on a thing where whatever the first guns I find that aren't just like basic pistols I'm gonna just Basically, try out anything but a Mozambique and a yeah pistol, honestly gonna, and, and I've been take. I've been having a great time with with the different guns in I mean, that game. That, that's like, cool that those are viable although like those two in my mind are like the trash tier weapons totally. that, like, you, just, you grab them out of desperation because you need something and then get rid of them as fast but as you like can. with a nice extended clip <laughs> and, a, and a good barrel stabilizer you know I can put somebody down real quick with the at mid-range like because that's that's how I prefer fighting anyway I play Pathfinder and I like grappling behind people surprising them at mid-range and going in with my assault rifle or that's, auto that, shotgun. That's cool. You you and Will Smith are, are the only like devoted Pathfinder <laughs> players I know and that's cool because I feel like nobody uses that character. And I unlocked the, the gra <laughs> so it's funny there's like you know the track the individual character specific trackers that mm -hmm. everyone has of yeah. like number of times you've done this. So there's one for Pathfinder that is distance traveled on a zip line and mine right now is like 310,000 which sounds insane <laughs> huh. but uh, you get like 30,000 of whatever they are a game cuz oh, like it's like yeah. whatever pixels I don't know sure, what it, it's yeah. like undefined what the distance Inches, is yeah. so like whenever people see it they're like oh shit like you must have played yeah. a lot and it's like no nah, I just no, it's, it's like I moved that many it's, inches. It's, it's, it's a fake number. That's pinball. <laughs> you, it's pinball uh, numbers. Yeah, exactly. Do you hit the map beacons? Because I feel oh, like yeah. the one thing I never see out of pub Pathfinder players is like they never use the map beacon, and it's so, so useful. I will only drop at a place that has access to a map yeah, beacon. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, so it's kind of cool winning those two I, I, those two games I won back to back but there was actually like days between them because I just I turned it on played one match won and went cool yep. and then like a couple days later turned it on and, and won again uh, it actually made me the champion on huh. that second oh, one oh yeah because in one. my last game I had huh. won uh, and we won that one too. Wow. So I went like Damn. fucking champion start to finish. Do you get like bonus experience uh, for chaining wins? You do. No, I don't, I don't know if you get it for chaining wins, but I did get like a, hey, you were the champion oh, squad. So nice. there's an additional 500 points or whatever the fuck it was. You guys see this like minor controversy about the different characters having different size hitboxes? Yeah. But, but that's, it seems Gibraltar like it's based on... And, uh, I think Pathfinder's supposed toxic to have a guy. bigger hitbox too. Uh, uh, caustic. Yeah, Caustic and Path or Caustic and and Gibraltar for sure definitely have larger hitboxes. Well, they're larger characters. I would, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, that seems like something that hopefully you would balance around. Like as as long as as long as you're taking that into account when balancing the rest of the game, uh, then yeah, you can have smaller characters and bigger characters and all that other stuff. You're not going to end up in some odd job situation. Like Gibraltar's whole thing is he kind of 
he kind of telegraphs where you are between yeah. the giant shield, yeah. his gun shield, his big yeah. hitbox. I guess like, I get that. I guess he has enough like shields and cover that being a bigger target is not as big a problem. I guess that's their thinking. I don't know. Like it, I, maybe that stood out to me more because at the event that I went to when they yeah. revealed it, they were saying they kept harping on like we're calling them legends, not heroes, because we want everybody to know that like they move the same. They at the base level, sure, they all shoot the same. Yeah. Right. They have yeah. powers, but it's not like an Overwatch situation of some characters or slower, or whatever. Like, right. So when they were saying, like, hey, we have this baseline of just, it's a shooter, like, to hear that the characters are different in that way felt counter to that. But... I wonder if they maybe need to, well, whatever, I'm, I'm no balancing expert. I was going to say, maybe the bigger guys should have more HP. But, yeah, but like, that's know. that's a very basic kind of fighting game yeah. <laughs> approach to it, I which know. I think could work, but, yeah, it gets tricky once you start changing those base totally. numbers, and it's like, okay, well, should Braith move faster? Like, huh. Weird. I'm just looking at a article about this. Like, there are also some quirks. Like, like b if you shoot between Bloodhound's legs, the bullets will pass through. But if you shoot between Pathfinder's legs, it counts as a hit. Huh. So there's just some weird yes. like, inconsistencies around that stuff. I'm changing characters. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, or crouching all the time. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll change some of that stuff. Yeah. As as the season one stuff ramps up, I really wish they had given a date because I'm dying to know. Yeah. Like March is in three days or right. something. Yeah, is it a leap year? I can't remember, but uh, I feel like it'd be p pretty in theme with how the game came out if it was just like, "Hey, the Battle Pass is out. Here you go." Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's March first or if it'll be later in the month, but super curious to see what's going to be in that thing. Yeah. Um, you guys, got anything else? I've been playing uh, Supercell's uh, new oh, mobile no. game, Brawl oh, Stars. No. I checked it out. Yeah, it's yeah. not that bad, right? It's kind of cool. Yeah. So it's um. It's kind of like a twin stick shooter type deal. Huh. Uh, yeah, three top v three, down. yeah, top down. Uh, you get three bullets; those that recharge over time. And uh, progression is just based off how m many trophies you're winning. You're winning trophies through different victories, and you unlock more characters. But then the part where the microtransactions come in is that you can potentially buy more crates to possibly unlock new uh, characters. It's pretty neat. This I've I've had a good time with it. This looks way different than their other stuff. Oh, oh yeah, it's yeah. completely different. Huh. I kind of got to that point where I got to when I was playing Clash Royale uh, initially, which was like, okay, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. I'm beating other new people at the game. Yeah. Okay, here are all the people now suddenly who I think, uh, whatever, I think that no, I'm like it. more skilled than them, but just they have it. put more money uh -huh. into the game Definitely. and have better oh, yeah. characters. Yep. And now I... That's that game. Now I need to either That's commit it. or pull out. Do that like eight or ten more times over the course of like two years <laughs> yeah. and then ask what you've done with your life. <laughs> yep. I'm a, uh, I have a group of friends I play with regularly, just like maybe an hour at night, and then we've all reached the point like where we've like gotten past a certain tier where we've like earned a thousand trophies. We're good together, but now that we're at, at this newer point, we're losing all the time <laughs> because <laughs> everyone is yep. better than us. They've just got more health than you. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is a battle royale mode in it, which is kind of funny. Huh. Uh, it's like 10 characters. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's winning there, not in Apex. Man, Clash Royale is such a good game. It is yeah. so utterly. Oh, there's also no emoting. Completely undermined by his business model. There's no emoting at all okay. in Brawl Stars. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, they got ahead of that one. Yeah. They'll add it. Don't worry. Uh, uh, I, I will say, I forgot uh, in terms of games, since Pokemon is in the news, we've been playing, me, me and my partner have been playing uh, Pokemon, or. Er, Pokemon, let's go, Eevee. Woo! Uh, which is a delight. God, yeah. I, I was talking to you so earlier. Fucking cute. Of just like just seeing it all in 3D, hearing all those songs. Like, uh, I like that there's little tiny changes here and there, mm -hmm. like little updates to what people say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we just got to the part where Team Rocket kind of gangs up on you and Lorelai comes in and saves you. And she's like, oh, yeah. you're a trainer. You should come see me eventually at the Elite Four. I thought that was a nice little touch. Uh, I will say the, the the battle background in the Ghost Tower uh, is really fucking cool. Yeah. It's like yeah. one of the cool... Like It made me feel like I was... That the, it made me feel the same feeling I felt playing it as a kid, imagining what it looked like in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is a really cool, like as a pure nostalgia piece, it is hitting every 
marker. And it, it's funny that like all the roots that are burned into your memory from way back then are still applicable now. And then it's like, okay, yeah, I'm supposed to go here, then there, then there. There's a healing spot in the ghost tower here. Yeah, I just like, yeah, it's like, okay, we need to go get the slip scope, blah, blah, boom, boom, boom. Like just, yeah, it all came back to me in a way that I, I haven't thought about it actively for, you know, <laughs> 15 years or whatever. Yeah. But sure enough, um, I will say it's kind of a bummer. The catching stuff uh, can be a little wonky. So mm -hmm. we're like playing it docked. And sometimes it's just as like the ball is going in the l literal complete opposite direction of where Amy yep. it. And that's, that's what happened yeah. when we were playing at E3. It was just seemed, it almost seemed broken. Yeah. Uh, it, it's huh. a bummer when that sort of stuff happens. I thought uh, it's a motion. It's a motion thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, I was, 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 was going to say, I thought they had motion kind of figured out by now on. What is uh, this? What is this? <laughs> basically, basically like the third version of motion controllers they've yeah. made. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's like a problem with our setup or whatever, but you know, sometimes we just move the Wii and it'll maybe start working again. Maybe you bought that uh, Pokeball. Yeah, no, maybe. even with a Pokeball. Yeah. I saw <laughs> some trouble. All right. Maybe you got to like overhand rather than underhand. You gotta, oh, like, we've never tried the overhand. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Forcibly throw the ball at the Pokemon. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'll make sure to get the wrist strap on first though. There yeah. we go. Yeah. It comes Safety with first. a little ring too. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Thursday night? I think it was Thursday night. I started the PS4 version of Anthem. Because I wanted to see how it runs on consoles. Yeah. And somehow just ended up playing through most of Anthem again on the console. Because mm -hmm. for one thing, if you skip the side missions and just play that game. It's not a long game. It's a very short game. Yeah. <laughs> I got up to the Tomb Challenges in I think like three hours or mm -hmm. something. Like it's very quick. Uh, I've had a weird arc with that game over the weekend. Because like I was almost starting to come around on some aspects of it. Yeah. At a point. Um. Because I had played so much on the PC, I was like, ah, I'll do all these story missions on hard. Let's, like, see right. what, what a demanding version of this combat is like. And yeah. it's better. Like, it makes you move around. It makes you use the flight and the dodging more, which is, like, the one thing it has going like for it. Like, having to get out of the way yeah. uh, is, is a big just, step. Yeah. Like, not being able to just stand there and shoot and right. ability stuff kind of mindlessly mm. helps that game. Did also, you roll with the same javelins you were using no, on PC? No, I... I went with the Ranger because the Ranger is the only one that you get the, uh, is it a pre-order bonus or is it a Legion of Dawn bonus? I, I forget. But maybe one of each. I forget what only, it is. Only, well, so there's the weapon that all classes get, but yeah. then the Ranger is the only one that also gets like a legendary ability out yeah. of the box. So it's like a level 18 charge blast. Yeah, so I felt like I had to play the Ranger because it's the only one that gets the cool, <laughs> good weapon. Um, and like I was flying around the world and hitting waterfalls. And I was like, oh, this feels fun to just screw around. Sure. And, you know, keep my flight going as long as possible, but and then you remember there's kind of nothing to do in that world except mm. grind out the same mediocre events over and over. Uh, yeah, it kind of falls apart. I, I when when they sent those console codes, uh, codes over, I also you know, dropped that PS4 code in and messed with it a little bit. And I was like, ah, this doesn't run as well. Yeah, and I mean, it's the, jarring at times first. are way longer. Oh, the low times are so bad. Brutal. Oh my God, they're rough. Uh... But yeah, there's, but there's, there's definitely a feeling of just like, oh, if you really skip through all of the fort stuff, yeah. uh, and, and and that's something you might maybe would only know if you'd already played the game. Right, because yeah, I did it all on PC, and then I was like, oh, I'll do this later here. I yeah, but it. if you're just like mashing the circle button through everything in that game, yeah. uh, it, it moves at a better pace, for sure. Right up until you get to the Tomb Challenges, yeah. uh, where I'm having a completely different problem than what I had on PC which is that I couldn't find treasure chests to save my fucking life. Mm. I think it's because everybody has now learned, like, the route through the world and mm. is getting all the chests. That's possible. There's, like, YouTube I, videos yeah, out there. It's like, hey, here's, here's where all the chests are. Just do this loop and you'll yeah, just there's only the There's only three other people in that world with I you. I know, so. but, but I loaded in and out of free play, like, probably five or six times yesterday. Yeah. And, like, all but, like, one or two times the chests that I knew where they were were not right. there. Huh. And occasionally they would be. Um, you get one for point, completing a world event. So that's so. the thing. At that point, if you can't find them in the world, because you need like 15 of them, uh, at that point, if you can't get them from finding them in the world, which is supposed to be the fastest way, yeah, you have to grind those world events or you have to run Tyrant Mine over and over. Cool. So, <laughs> uh, here's what has happened in the last like a day and a half on the console with that game. Mm. Uh, there was one point where I was flying around free play, looking for treasure chests and like harvesting stuff for those challenges. Yeah. I noticed that I couldn't harvest anymore because the button prompt was broken when I would try to go up to stuff and open it. Yep. And I was like, well, I'm near a tomb. Let's, or, you know, there's a tomb across the map. I'll go open the one that I have finished, uh, before I reload this thing, try to fix the button prompt. 
fly for like 10 minutes across the map to go to that tomb, walk up to the tomb door, realize the button prompt is also broken on the tomb door. Cool. Go to quit the game. Game hard crashes to the, the system interface. Mm -hmm. PS4 immediately powers off. Whoa. Oh, wow. Uh, and that happened again last night. <clears throat> I looked on Reddit. Like, apparently it's a pretty common problem on PS4. Weird. The game crashes and then shuts your PS4 down. Weird. Immediately. Like, wow. hard power off. How no, does that happen? No LED, no nothing. You turn it back on and it, like, gripes at you about, like, oh, you didn't shut down properly. Oh, great. We so have to check storage. Even, it's a bad shutdown. And then, I have to, and then it has to repair my external hard drive after that. Yep. So, like, every time... Uh, and this is also happening to people, including me, when you force close the application. Mm -hmm. So if you can make it back to the title screen after logging out of the game and then you just do close application, it still happens. Huh. And so, yeah, basically every time I play the game, if that happens, turning the PS4 back on is like a five minute process yeah, yeah. of waiting for all these storage checks to happen. Like it's and it's like common enough. That it's just like, how the fuck? That's fucking bizarre, man. Did this get out? Yeah. The door. Um. Dude, Even when it's working, uh, it's yeah, it's a bizarre I had, product. I had Tyrant Mind go sideways in an insane way yesterday that I probably just won't get into hmm. unless you really want to like hear a, it. like te from a technical issues perspective. Uh, so or? the se you know the second to last encounter where you have to stand on that platform. Yep, while the bugs all crawl up. Sure. for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to that and the game failed to spawn the bugs. Cool. So we just stood there on the platform for like five minutes. Yeah, occasionally shooting those orbs that show up until that finished. Uh, then we went to the boss, which is right after that. Got it down to like an eighth of its health. Yeah. Game crashed. Yep. Just as I was about to get credit for this long ass mission that I've done like six times already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's got yeah, that. I, I had the PC version crash near yeah, the end yeah, of missions totally. multiple times too. It's yeah. Um, it's got that rejoin session function. You know, it's like yeah. when you restart the game, it's like, oh, you had a session open. Do you want to get back in there? So I like hammer on that. I'm like, dude, if I could just get back in there mm -hmm. before they kill the boss, I'll be okay. I get back in there and I'm the only one in that room. With no enemies. Cool. And then I start seeing my team also start spawning in. So apparently everybody crashed oh, at the same time. Sure. Uh, then the encounter never triggered. Oh, like, so it's just boss, a, here's an empty room. The boss just it. hung out in that hole at the top of the room, like Weird. like growling occasionally. Great, great, great. Uh, we, found, we finally found a way to clip into the monster closet where the bugs come from in that level, huh. which kills you with, like, poison. <laughs> so we all went in there and died, and then it checkpointed us and started the encounter properly. Just, uh, yeah, it's just, man, it's like uh, just, just when I felt like I was kind of getting to the good stuff in the game, yeah, like I, stuff like that started cropping up and I'm just like, man, I think once you get a handle on the flight and stuff like that stuff can be fun Yeah, and it, like, like exploring the waterfalls yeah. and, and like when know, I stopped like, treating the open world as like a place to check off tasks right. and just started flying around and it's like, I'm going to see how long I can fly, but without even, touching even that, down like that in itself is pretty entertaining. Yeah. They just they just need to build so much more around that. That's just yeah. Well, whatever. We, we've uh, we've spent a lot of time oh, talking about I know how fucking repetitive and yeah poorly. But he hearing these bugs is yeah it's kind of astounding. I knew the game yeah. like didn't have a, it was kind of thin in terms of variety of content yeah. and stuff. But like hearing you today and yesterday talk about some of the bugs yeah, like, yeah just this, like that stuff on top of it. You're the, just like okay like it, the game's barely worth looking at yeah even yeah. if it's like, functional like like it's, it goes from on, like, it goes from a very specific recommendation of well you have to be okay with this and this to just like. Probably don't. Yeah, like the, yeah. the the bugs I saw on PC were nothing like this. Like I think the worst thing I saw on PC was the ultimate meter being misleading, like showing that it was oh, full yeah. when it was not. Like yeah, that's yeah. the worst thing I saw there. I think uh, for me it was like crash bugs. And, oh yeah, yeah, and, I think and, and the, once or twice. the stuff of like, oh, I got to the point it told me to go to, and then nothing happened for like nine minutes because mm, yeah. it was it just didn't trigger, and then finally sure. it did. Some and, like server, yeah, yeah, lag type stuff, weird shit like that. But, but, but having it fucking shut your console off, that's good stuff. And, like, like I'm worried it's gonna like. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, when that happened, I rebooted the game, and it was like, "Oh, your settings file is corrupted. It will be recreated now." Cool. Mm -hmm. Like, just it kind of concerns you that your console is going to be a casualty of this mess. Well, it's you know, you have one of those bad power offs on a PS4. You eventually, you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to re-download the full firmware reinstall. Yep, that's and what I had to do. I just, Red Dead. I just totally. had to do this because of from I talking about a UPF from a power outage. Yeah. Uh, forced me to redo all of that. Oh, and then you and just I lose lost. everything on there, yep. right? Any yeah. saves that didn't get uploaded? Yes. Media any, Yeah, clips. Any, any video clips? Man. Yeah, like it kind of makes me afraid to keep playing that version until they try to hotfix this. Because it happened twice yesterday. Very hot. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good time. I need to finish that game. Just move on with my life. Uh, is that it for games? Y'all want to move on to a break? Yeah, sure. All right, sure. let's take a quick break and then we'll come back with news. All right. 
This week in the news, a uh, longtime Nintendo of America president, Reggie fils is uh, retiring on April 15th. Yeah. Uh, tax day. Yeah, he's out. Most famous for... He's fleeing from the tax collector. Inventing no, the not. Bigfoot pizza. He's not actually doing it. Yeah. Did he really pizza. do that? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and nothing else. Before we get to your jokes... He's being succeeded by a man named but Doug. But that's the bad guy from Mario, Brad. Doug Bowser. I just want to say real quick how nice it is for life to be the good kind of weird for once. <laughs> <laughs> and not the bad kind. It's rare. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel I think every conceivable permutation of every joke that can be told about this situation. I thought it was the Sean Anna guy for a second. Has already been told. Mm-hmm. But that's Bowser Bowman. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, maybe change his name. Who knows? Yeah. And get into that's Bowser. Bowser Bone might be a stage name, you know. <laughs> Probably is. Who says that Doug Bowser can Doug it? Bowser fit his whole fist in his mouth? Yes or no? <laughs> uh, Reggie's Reggie's been at Nintendo of America for over fifteen years now, which is crazy because yeah. I was at that press conference when he came out on stage and right. knew who he was. Yeah, and said the thing. Yeah, he said the stuff about kicking ass and taking names. Uh huh. And I'm like. Who is this mountain of a man, and how is he saying, like, borderline right. swear words on a Nintendo stage? It could be in a cuss shooter. They're the family company. <laughs> what is happening? He's leaving to be in a cuss shooter. Him and Mickey Rourke <laughs> oh, are doing a, a thing. Uh, yeah. He's a, a one-of-a-kind presence. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. At Nintendo. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, I, you know, I, I, he's become far less visible over the I years. so. Um, yeah. You know, the Nintendo Directs now pretty much just yeah, come out yes, of Japan yes. and get translated. And, I feel you know, like there's like it, just kind of a less of a platform for him, the, a public platform for him yeah. than there has been. That's but, why he left. He got mad. He's getting mad. Yeah. That he's no screen like, we made this puppet. What are we doing? Um, if we're not using the puppet, what are we doing? But the trajectory was that basically he went from becoming an unintentional meme. Yeah. To, r- yes. to more intentionality. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that stuff. I feel like that stuff peaked around. Uh, was it? Which Smash was it? Must have been the Four. Wii U Smash. Yeah. Where they had like the... Remember that ridiculous bit of Iwata and Reggie doing backflips and like... Oh, right. Torpedo yeah. attacks yep. and yeah. just crazy yeah. martial arts stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like that was kind of the peak of the Reggie and Iwata. Yeah. Tomfoolery mm-hmm. on the Nintendo Directs. Um, They've been having some fun with uh, Doug Bowser already. Yeah. Some little posts here and there of like him with... Mario has been there for a tied bit, up. You know, yeah, yeah. They, they, they did yeah. this. They, yeah, they, they kind of got the first wave of Bowser <laughs> stuff back when they announced he was getting hired in the first place. Yeah. So, so actually, reading this press, I, so I, I pulled the actual press release they put out for this, mm-hmm. and quietly, my favorite actual thing about this Doug Bowser situation is the, you know, the just the kind of formality and professional writing of the first time the person is mentioned, you hear their full name, right? But then every time after that, they just use the last name. Mm-hmm. Here's the paragraph about his background. Bowser is an industry veteran who joined NOA in May 2015 as the vice president of sales. During his time at NOA, Bowser led the sales and marketing efforts for Nintendo Switch. I mean, I'm just, yeah. you know. Previously, Bowser was an executive with industry powerhouse Electronic Arts. Oh, yeah. Like, just the, oh. way, the way this stuff reads with just the last name in there is d- delightful to yeah. me. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes, you know, he's he's got a sales background. Uh, Reggie did as well, yeah. I believe. Yeah, right? yeah he was. I think kind of. I think he was in the position that Doug Bowser is coming from before he became president, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, we'll that, that sounds right. I, yeah, I, I don't know enough about their organizational structure to say senior vice president thing, of sales but. and marketing. Uh, more or less, Reggie was executive vice president of sales okay. and marketing, so yeah, more or less the same type of role. But if you think about, you know, what Nintendo of America probably does most of these yeah. days, it is, you know, hey, how do we market the stuff in the U.S.? Yeah. And, you know, like a lot of the decisions are getting made in Japan and that sort of stuff. So, you know, it's like it's most a, of them, right? Yeah. Practically all of them, I would yeah. think. Uh, and then it comes down to it's like, OK, well, how do we take the stuff that is being made there and market it and sell it here? Right. You know, so totally. and, and obviously there's like all the localization and all the other stuff takes place as, as well. But sure. But you know, it's a sales or yeah, really. yeah it like, makes sense that they would get someone with that yeah. hard sales experience versus sure. like a grander vision for the company. Because yeah, that's no, what that's, that handle. stuff's coming out of Japan. The, yeah. the vision comes from there, and it's like okay, like deploy our vision totally. to the Americas. Like I, I had the exact same thought you did when I saw this and saw how upset a lot of people got about it. Yeah, 
Because I was like, yeah, it's not going to change the strategic direction of the company or anything. No. I mean, Japan dictates all that stuff. Yeah. But then it made me realize how much people just identify Reggie as like a or maybe the face right. of and, the company. And truly, truly. But I think that like even that is like a dated thing because I think that he has fallen so far uh, into, into, the, into the background, you yeah. know, like compared to like with the way that they're presenting information these days yeah. through the directs and stuff. Like he's just not that much of a force. Uh, or, or has not been a force publicly for, yeah. for some time. So I wonder, yeah, may, may, maybe it makes you wonder how much Iwata was driving that push like to, 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 make to put him out there. To make personalities yeah. out of the executives in the company. Yeah, I wonder. Maybe nobody in the leadership there is super into that anymore. I don't know. Hard to say. I mean, the people they're putting out there now are, you know, like the people with like tremendous credentials and, and you know, like they're fun. You know, I don't, I don't you know, the people that are doing the directs now are not like... I, well, yeah, but I, I, I guess... Like there, there hasn't been anything like that martial arts bit for a yeah, long time. Yeah, they haven't. That's what toned I mean. back the like, they, yeah. of it. Like and... at most, it's somebody coming out and presenting what the, the right. games they're about to show. They're not just doing ridiculous things that they clearly spend a lot of marketing budget on just for the sake of. Well, them. they're back to having games that speak for uh, themselves. That's, that's so. fair. That's a fair point. Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah, that was kind of in don't the Wii. quite need the song and dance <laughs> okay? of the Wii U sure. era in when you've sure. got these games. That's fair. Uh, uh, I wish I I need to fucking learn the gentleman's name who kind of seems like the face of the directs right. the most. I, he's a I looked at one of the top level developers. Yes, he, he's been there for a very long the, time. The, yeah. the Switch yep. Snap yeah. guy. And, and, and yeah, I know he's, I know he's been right now, which is terrible. I know I've, he's been in development at Nintendo for ages. Yes. Uh, I want to say people were saying he worked on Link's, Link's Awakening, Awakening, the original Link's Awakening. Right. So he's been yeah. there forever. Um, I, I, somebody will tweet his name at us and then I will make the, I, I, yeah, was, I will I, make I, a point you know, of we can, remembering it. We can get it right now. But yeah, that's, yeah. But I think that, again, that speaks to just like, you know, hey, they're, they're going for a more informative direction with it. Not to say yeah. they're not like whack when they were doing the Splatoon stuff and, you know, it's like, hey, I'm dressed up all crazy. You know, there, there's little bits and sure. pieces here and there. Sure. Um, but it's a very different presentation and, and they, they care of themselves very differently now yeah. than they, they used to. Because, you yeah. know, keep in mind, like the stuff coming out of the America, uh, the, the American office for like the stuff they do for YouTube. Mm, yeah, you sure. Know, you got Kid Ellis out there. Yes. Making it happen. Becoming a household name. That's right. Cycling, cycling a variety of driving looks. the world wild. You got bearded kit, yeah, clean shaven uh -huh. kit. You got long hair. You got like clean cut. Yep, it's, he's all over the place. Yeah, the mini permutations. Yes, glorious, uh, truly glorious. Yes. It's been, it's been, it's been fun to watch that yeah. stuff. So yeah, they, so you know they, they've just changed a lot of the the way that they present stuff. Yes, uh, I mean the switch itself now has all that news channel stuff built in too. Yep. So they just they get information out different ways. Yeah, he's he's going at it a good time. Yeah, Nintendo I, I, is. Yeah. Uh, in a good place, yeah, for him to be taking off now. And he's almost sixty, you know. Yeah, he's getting he's there. Got to work on that uh, twenty twenty campaign. That's right. Yeah. Oh boy. Huh. <sighs> he's uh, that would be interesting. I mean, he he, he worked Canadian, for like Pizza yeah. Canada. Yeah, right. I was gonna say. I'm, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. was he straight from what is that company called? Nintendo of Canada. No, no, the Pizza Hut. <laughs> company pizza hut oh, uh, uh, yum uh, is, it, is that yum, yum brands? brands or is that food yeah is that yum is that a yum brand I brand, feel like they're, brand? They're in the Isn't yums. pizza hut yeah. like pepsi it's pizza hut taco bell and kfc are, i think are the three of the yum and a and w yeah taco bell kfc pizza hut and wing street <laughs> hmm uh yeah, I can't remember if did he come straight from pizza hut was he a nike it was nike a then pizza hut oh, then was that what it was then nintendo okay. okay cool yeah uh yeah end of an era yeah, uh, <laughs> he's getting out of there. At what seems to be a very interesting time for video games, <laughs> as uh, rumors seem to be picking up steam. Oh, that uh, Microsoft is bringing Xbox Game Pass to Switch, huh. which like pretty obvious idea when you really get down to what Microsoft appears to be doing long term. Yeah, I mean, like I think it was like less than a month ago that we talked about this exact possibility. Sure, happening and. It came out of uh, Direct Feed Games, which I had not heard of, but apparently has a pretty good track record for Nintendo rumors. In fact, that's what the Game Informer story said about and then, it. Uh, the, and then the, the, the Game Informer seems to be basically corroborating it. Like, they added... Mm -hmm. uh, what? Let's see. What they added to the original report was, in talking with our own sources, it has been suggested that the announcement of Game Pass on Switch could come as soon as this year. Yeah. Wow. Uh, which, yeah. Uh, super insane. To think, yeah. to think of having access to not not the entire Xbox catalog. I guess it would still be curated based on like what they signed deals for. Well, like whatever's on Game Pass, presumably. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's this is also 
probably part of a major shift for Game Pass and Microsoft's streaming aspirations, right? Do you I think mean, would would you think Game Pass streaming would launch everywhere at the same time as Switch? Y- I, I might even say that Game Pass launches in some places first and maybe the Switch version lags behind because they got to get it up and running and blah, blah, blah. I, 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 don't, I don't know that it's guaranteed to be day and date across the board. Yeah. But if you look at it as like, okay, what's the likely move for Microsoft at, at, at this point when we talk about what they're going to do next with a next generation of hardware, all this other stuff? Um, they, of course, have been very big on the streaming stuff. They've been promoting that big time. Like that seems like the next major battlefield for gaming, uh, for for platforms. It's it's, it's a services fight uh, as opposed to a box you put into your TV fight. Yep. Um, and so Microsoft has been expanding this stuff onto the PC, not to the point where they would sell a Game Pass subscription to PC people specifically because there's not a ton of games you can play there yet. Yeah. No um it's mostly just the microsoft stuff right? exactly yeah yeah um and and so you're building this thing that you can pivot right of, of like okay now this is a streaming service now this game pass subscription gets you access to these games wherever you are um because they've done the work to make that happen or, right. or you know what, whatever it is um and so at that point it's yeah it's 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 phones. It's anything. It's maybe it's anything with a web browser that can take a controller at that point, yeah. you know, the same way Google's project stream testing is gone. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, they've got the GDC panel about getting Xbox live up and running on iOS. And yeah. Android. I was say they uh, brought Xbox live to switch. I feel, I feel like right. like week after week, there's just more and more signs that they, that Xbox is just becoming a platform. Totally. Across, so at, at across that point, every you know, device. like Microsoft put Minecraft onto switch. They have put their games onto other platforms already yeah I, it was probably uh, happening maybe before the acquisition but like ninja theory who is now owned by microsoft is putting hellblade out on switch so right yeah yeah like there are ongoing so, examples of that stuff like, at the, some point if you just need you need people you need the biggest install base you can get for your service so yeah. it, it's less about you know like hey maybe you still sell a box and they, they will um yeah I think but the, maybe it's for them it's like okay you know if you want that premium tier experience we will still sell you that yeah and you can play these games locally in your home, blah, blah, blah. But hey, maybe you're on the road sometimes. We're not going to go make a fucking portable Xbox because that's your phone. That's your Switch. That's everything else you've got Right? Uh, can presumably play these same Xbox games with your saves because that's how their cloud save stuff works already. Yep. Uh, and so that idea of like, hey, play this game at home and then play it wherever you are because, hey, you're on a, you know, you're you're on the road play this somewhere else it you know maybe it's a reduced experience but it still is the experience yeah hotel uh, internet being what it is yeah yeah uh that that's that's a harder bridge to cross for sure this yeah. makes perfect sense yeah. but it's it's still incredibly yeah, fucking wild to me totally, that like, I, the ne- I could play the next mario and halo games on the same console right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, like uh, this type of thing. Like if you had said this out loud five years ago, you'd just been like, "What?" Yeah, I, three years. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, um, it's it's, and, and you know, Google has a keynote at GDC, don't they? I think so. Yes, they've been out yeah. there to kind of you know, yeah. like they they ran their Assassin's Creed stuff. Yep. Um, and so this fight is about to get like the the like platform it's about to get raw base thing is about to totally shift in a totally different direction yeah, yeah the console yeah. wars are over yeah basically <laughs> it's the streaming you know it's it's services it's are you signing up for netflix or are you, are you signing up for spotify or apple music or you know like yeah. like it's, it's just another one of those fights yeah based like, on who's got the content like microsoft obviously doing the work now to broaden the the base of this thing you know like sure. you get it on devices as fast as possible but yeah it's really just going to come down to the lineup yeah Definitely. I mean, what what and is pricing, you what know? could Sony possibly do to like compete then in this sort of same space? I mean, they made big purchases years ago about streaming tech when they bought Gaikai and they parlayed that into the PlayStation Now stuff. So yeah. they're not out of this game uh, by any means, yeah. but I feel like PlayStation Now just hasn't been great. Yeah, um, and they've been playing catch up on you know they eventually added the ability to download games through PlayStation Now and oh, play them right, locally right, right. and yeah. not just stream them. Yeah, but like even that seemed like a response to uh, some the, of the Game, game Pass, Pass stuff. stuff. Yeah. And last I checked, I mean, I should look again, but last I checked, like Bloodborne was still like the biggest game they were yeah. offering on that service. And that's like a four-year-old game at this point. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they've been in a leadership position for as far as install base and software, you know, like all that sort of stuff. So, you know, they're, they're playing it safe. Um, but that's the sort of thing I, you know, like if they're not careful, the rug gets pulled out from underneath you at that point. And, yeah. and there was a, a story, gosh, 
there've been reports saying like uh you know hey we uh Sony seem, seems like it is heading in the direction of doubling down on VR and AR. Hmm. Um which you know they've had good success with the PlayStation VR yeah. presumably whatever they do next will you know be, continue that thought. Uh and that's something that I don't think you really can stream uh yeah. you know just the the latency is just going to make you sick. Definitely. Uh even if it's small enough to be largely imperceptible to yeah, a lot of players it's, it's just not going to happen soon um and and so you know maybe that's the direction they go in so then you've got like pretty different value propositions from the three traditional players in the space yeah. where you've got you know if, if sony's kind of str going in that direction of just like hey we've got a powerful box and we've built it for vr and all yeah. this other stuff and got... and like those patents that were coming out i mean this is very speculative but sure. all the backwards compatibility stuff that seems to be coming out about the ps5 yeah. mm -hmm. and like if that thing comes out and can run all your old PlayStation games, that's pretty right. appealing yeah. too. Um, but it, but, but it's it a is, very it is a very different thing. Yeah, absolutely. And and then you've got Microsoft taking the services approach, and then Nintendo has the handheld. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you like, as a as a customer of video games who like who spends money on them, bought a PS5, had a Switch, and signed up for Game Pass, probably all three of those companies are happy, right? Yeah, no, yeah. If, like, if you were paying Microsoft the regular the, the, fee yeah, for, yeah. and that's why you know, like, like they the, just want they just want everybody who is interested in video games to pay them ten, 10 bucks a month, like, yep, like Netflix. Totally. Yeah. Like if they can achieve something close to that, that's all they care yeah, about. Fifteen, you know, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. It's it's you know. Yeah, maybe they maybe the price goes up as streaming right. gets added to the package. Or and whatever. you have to but, wonder, like you know, what's the you know, how does how does EA feel about people signing up for a $15 fee playing Anthem and quitting? Yeah. Uh, you know, is, is that something where hey, at least they test drove the service, they know it exists. Yes. The next yes. time they'll, they'll come they back. They have again. a login the, already. Yeah. We have their email. You know, like, that's, that's like, the other reason I didn't pull Anthem sales numbers into this. In addition to the, just not having a complete picture. Cause it's like a right. UK physical and blah, blah, blah. But like the other thing is, yeah. Like what other metric of success does EA see for Anthem? Exactly. Like if it, if it drove, 300 percent yeah origin access premiere signups then like they might look at that and that's and be the, like that's you know that is that is a victory we got into that talking about crackdown also you know just by virtue of like hey yeah maybe you, you, you know, like they will let you pay 60 dollars for crackdown 3 don't do that <laughs> sure like just do not yeah. um that is it is too it is oh, not enough game for somebody, that much money somebody did that so plenty of people did yeah, yeah. um uh, but you know like the if they can look at it as like, oh, yeah, maybe it sold not a ton of copies, whatever, but did it keep people engaged with our service? Yeah. Like existing subscribers, did they play Crackdown 3? Yeah. Or did we see a spike in signups around we, that yeah, time? Yeah, exactly. Did yeah. we see a spike in signups? What was the retention on that sort of stuff? Yep. You know, it, it's it's the same thing that Netflix would see around the premiere of a show. Right. Uh, HBO Go subscriptions around Game of Thrones time. Yep. You know, like, not that, not that Crackdown is <laughs> as big as Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's bigger. <laughs> Uh, it's more orbs. Yeah, way more Mother orbs. Of orbs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, like it's it's a fundamental shift in the business of games. Yeah. Um, as soon as it it gets into that, and and we're in this very messy period because games are still being sold traditionally, and everyone thinks of them that way, and and you go like, okay, as a sixty dollar this and that, and you know, and but, then there's all sorts of free games that have their own exactly. internal subscription yeah, stuff, yeah. like with battle passes. It's all over the place. It's so totally. hard to like, no, yeah. Before you could say this game sold this many of this copy on these platforms. Right now, it's impossible to know how any video game is performing at any time, unless it's like well, you look at Steam numbers. Yeah, like, so you start looking at like concurrence. Like, what's, yeah. what's the engagement? on but so, like a lot game. of those aren't public now like ever since right. league kind of started obfuscating that before like you could see how everything was doing on steam mm -hmm. you were like oh steam charts blah blah, blah. but yeah. then you know league started obfuscating that and then fortnite like all the other big games kind of decided oh it's maybe in our interest to like say we hit these numbers when we hit those numbers but right. not but kinda... not yeah not like minute to minute yeah and and fortnite they actually epic got out and gave their concurrence number recently which I imagine is like they say it, it was like it was tucked into a, another announcement. It was like since a lot of you have been asking, we're fine. Uh, Seven point five million on a non-event day. Ten million people watched that marshmallow thing, and it 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 felt like a uh, okay. We understand that Apex is out there announcing numbers, and a lot of you are coming to us asking us what our number is because you know you're comparing these two games. Apples. You to want apples. a narrative that they're yeah, killing exactly. our game. You, you want to know what the story is. Here's the story. Seven point five or we're, whatever. We're doing it was. okay. We're fine over here. Yeah. Um, which you know, yeah. So like, it, the, those are the metrics that matter now. And 
it's uh it's interesting i don't know man i i'm of like a billion different minds about it because like the streaming stuff i worry about how well it performs um when especially when it comes to like a yeah. you know a good fighting game or something like that you know is that going to be yes i and so microsoft having this hybrid approach of like they will probably still issue a box that plays you know the vast majority of things locally yeah the, those last rumors from some of the microsoft connected rumor sites were like big fancy xbox one x style powerful box right and here's like a cheaper maybe discless thing that could do the streaming but not yeah. run the big fancy games locally and, and i can even see hints of that in the design of the xbox one where the initial stuff of the rollout of like it needs to always be online you could yeah. see they were thinking ahead to that this yeah sort, sort of sort of, kind sort of. of. Like, like you yeah. can see how they were would get to where they got now right um yeah, you, you definitely. Well, the biggest thing that's changed since then is the concept of ownership of a game, you know? Yeah. Like, at this point, it's just, hey, pay us a fee every month to play whatever we offer you, but you don't own yeah. any games. And and that was the thing that, like, they announced that information wrong, and it was the wrong time to yeah. go in that direction with the Xbox One. But, yeah. like, you know, as digital eclipse, digital sales continue to grow, and physical sales are not, you know, not really what they used to be, like all they were doing with the rollout of the Xbox One as an always online thing is codifying this thing that was more or less going to happen naturally anyway. Yeah. They were just trying to force it and people didn't like being forced. Yeah. Uh, so instead they said like, okay, well, what if we ran flash sales on <laughs> digital games and you just got into this ecosystem anyway yeah. and you didn't even realize you were being, you know, horn swoggled into it. Uh, but here we are. Yeah. yeah. And and I, that's, that's why I'm of so many different minds of it because like, I like the the concept of owning games, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, or, or the the ability to do so if I choose. The convenience of digital plus the naked realities of we get digital games from publishers for coverage purposes, uh, more so than physical games. Uh, I the convenience of digital, I I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's like you know, ripping apart the resale industry and like you know it's, exactly it's, it's, yeah yeah uh, which I mean, it, you know has point. its ups and downs yeah. For this, sure. Like at this point, I don't even know if GameStop will be around to see the next consoles, or, right. or they will exist in a different form. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm with you. I am kind of a traditionalist about like I'm, I'm skittish about latency in stream games. Like mm -hmm. I kind of want the best possible experience. On that end, the thing is, is like I, I tell myself that, but I'm not like I I, maybe, I can maybe, tell within a certain range. Yeah. But I am not like oh, well, there's the one there's one frame of lag here. That's like I'm thing, I'm maybe. not like fighting game right good at detecting latency yeah. yeah i mean like uh, my last experience with that stuff i think was playing a ps3 game on playstation now which was like very noticeable right but that was a long time ago yeah like i mean what what we basically... I played uh, some street fighter cross tekken on an nvidia shield last okay. week yeah. uh through like geforce now which is like they're like hey you bought a shield or you you came into possession of a shield uh we'll let you play these games and I played it and it was like it was playable yeah i could do combos yeah you know like if if i was a pro player I would probably be like, fuck this. Yeah. But as a not pro player, I was like, this is an acceptable way to play a game. If I, I wanted to sit down yeah. with some friends and play Street yeah. Fighter across yeah, Tekken, exactly. you would have an like, okay you time. Could, you could do it. Yeah, like I was remote playing a lot of Destiny from my PS4 yeah. on my PC just to grind out whatever a few mm -hmm. months ago, and that was fine. But yeah, it is noticeable. Like it's not right. the exact same thing. And so I think that's the thing of, of like, you know, that's why I think the this idea of like, hey, there's still a box under your TV for when you want that. Yeah. But sometimes you just need to do some shit and you're stuck somewhere else. Right. Like, you know, that's, I play a lot of, you know, questionable mobile games. Yes. That if I was suddenly able to just, you know, play full on games, maybe I would do that more often. Yeah. Uh, but also then that changes the, the whole concept of like, how do games pause? How do they suspend? Like, you know, they, they, they these consoles did do that, but not all that well. Um, you know, like if you play and you know jump into a Destiny mission or Anthem, you know, like some oh, yeah. awesome online game, Division yeah. Two, whatever. Like, oh, I got ten minutes to do this. Oh, I didn't finish it. Oh, I lost all my progress. Like, right. that's you know, that's not a great experience. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be. I think I even said as much last week. It's gonna be a weird fucking year. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there has never been a more complicated and overwhelming time in the business of games. Like, just so many weird, crazy things are happening so fast. It's the. Yeah, I, I was going to say it's, it's like going from cartridge to CD, but even that was still a fundamental idea of like you went to a place oh, yeah, and bought yeah, a thing. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't change that much in the yeah. grand scheme. This is... This, this stuff is like probably the biggest kind of paradigm shift to ever occur. Paradigm shift. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes I, yes, I was well aware of how that would oh, sound. Um, 
it's exciting, uh, yeah. but also scary. Yes. <laughs> like I, I, I get why people are like, oh, fuck streaming, but also like, eh, it's intriguing. It's intriguing. Yeah. And, and we seem to be on the cusp of like basically game streaming kind of 2.0. I mean, with like Google and Microsoft basically doing all this R and D behind yeah. the scenes that we haven't necessarily that on live tried to do, right. but didn't have the funding and the tech right. wasn't maybe far enough along yes. yet. And, I mean, you like, know, like those, these are basically two of the biggest networking focused companies in the world. You know? Right. Like if anybody can make the stuff work, it is those two companies. <laughs> yeah, but they'll also, you know, they'll still have to presumably, and, and well, fuck, man, maybe they won't. I was gonna say they'll have to account for the parts of the world that are just not going to have fast oh, enough totally. internet yeah, or totally. fucked up bandwidth caps yeah. or whatever it is. Like yeah. you're still going to need to offer some kind of solution for those players. Yeah. And, and, and they should, yeah. but I guess the other, the flip side of that I would say is like, actually, you know, if, if 5g phones are as good as they say they are, uh, and, and that sort of stuff changes, you know, like sprint just partnered with some streaming game company hmm. like yesterday or, you know, last week or, or whatever. Um, for for delivering games over five G and all that other shit. If that stuff's fast enough, maybe the gain in potential user base they get out of that shift makes them a little more okay with leaving some people behind. If they're like, okay, well, you know, some parts of the world this is not going to be viable for them, but there's so much more money to be made here that that's a gamble worth taking. And I wonder if if I wonder if some people will get completely fucked by this. Some people who like games yeah. will suddenly be like, oh, well, I can't get good internet where I live. I am in Australia, yeah. so I guess you hate us, you know, yeah. or, or whatever it is. But, yeah. well, I guess cloud providers have to cover the world, right? Yeah. If you're if you're out yeah. there doing that, a, people a, do business around the world. A, so if you're building a business cloud. Put a data center in Australia. Sure. Why not? Uh, here, I'll read one email that came in about this, basically the same subject. Matthew from Bentonville, Arkansas. The subject line, Sony and Microsoft should be trembling. All the talk of new consoles and what the big brands might or might not be doing made me want to write to remind you of the number one thing Microsoft and Sony should be worried about when designing their next consoles, Google. Yep. I signed up for the Google Project Stream beta solely because I wanted a free game that I wouldn't have bought otherwise. Never in a million years would I have thought the service would work as well as it did. It was near perfect. The only hiccups I experienced were due to my own internet setup when I tried to play on the opposite end of the house from my router. That's right, I played over Wi-Fi on an old shitty laptop, and there was no noticeable latency, and I don't even have that great of bandwidth, about 40 megabit down. Fuck. Uh, so yes, the big brands should watch their back and try to get some exclusive titles. I'm looking at you, Microsoft, because I will not buy a $500 box to play games if I can play them no problem on the computer I already have. Or the uh, smart TV, or the fucking or the Chromecast, phone. or the phone. Like eventually. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that that's the yes, absolutely. That that is the. Can that you imagine is what's how about cool it would be? Like how we're re we're really not that far of like you know uh, after school back in the day. It's like okay, we're gonna all go. To, we're gonna lug two TVs to this dude's house, and we're gonna get eight of us, and we're all gonna play yeah. Halo, and it's gonna be this like thing setting it all up. But like now, just at lunch. You get like eight kids together and on your phone just stream the newest console game. It's it's insane. Well, that yeah, we're but, like, but also like they could just be playing Fortnite right now natively because oh, totally. the phones are powerful enough for a lot of those games. Totally, and, and that's the you have access to. You we're so close to that. It's that kind of like future where you know in in like future VR in mm -hmm. science fiction was always just like. A time like the hardware was never a part of it. Exactly, like you yeah. never really yeah. saw the gear or whatever. It was yeah. like virtual screens and everything. That's really honestly not that far out. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Like it's closer now than it was ever before, and it's like yeah, it's it's, it's fucking weird. And and the what I'm saying is, Ready was... Player One is real. Oh, it's gonna finally. happen any minute uh, now. Damn. Uh, Assassin's Creed is probably one of the more perfect games for that setup because that's a game that doesn't feel all that snappy all the time sure. anyway. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can hide latency pretty well in, yeah. in a lot of, a lot of styles of games don't require it, yeah. right? You know, totally. they don't require that kind of like very direct motion yeah. or, or very, very timing sensitive things. And, you know, you can build games around those ideas. I think that's the part where I get scared because it's like, ah, I had... There are some games I like that are best played with like frame perfect, yeah. you know, this and that. Yeah. And like you probably wouldn't want to stream Apex Legends. 
but maybe you or could. A, or a racing game. Yeah, but like, or a fighting you're right, game. but at the same time, well, I, I would have built new I versions s- of those games. Yeah, right. I, I would have said you probably wouldn't want to play the PC version of Apex Legends with a controller, and I'm doing all right with that. Well, yeah. And like that's the not thing quite is, the same thing, though. Even if it's fine 99% of the time and you have like one moment of bullshit, it's so easy to like snap back into those games Definitely. that you're just like, oh, whatever, it's close enough. Like I was playing with a couple friends last night and it was kind of laggy and I couldn't figure out why, but I was still playing. <laughs> like there was just something going on with my computer or something or the network or whatever. I think the, the concern for me would be that larger feeling of like anytime you lose, you don't know. Yeah. You're always like, okay, wait a minute. Was this because like, am I just like some imperceptible latency that fucked me over here? Or it becomes very easy to blame that. Yeah. Uh, I always know too. that it was not. That it was definitely it was not that. you. Yeah, it was yeah. not me. Yeah. It was the right. lag. Uh, uh, real, real quick, back to the Nintendo stuff. Um, this rumor also. I mean, this is kind of a little sidebar here, but Microsoft sounds like they. It sounds like maybe Microsoft may be porting some of their smaller Xbox One games natively to the Switch. Ori and the Blind Forest is the one that's mentioned here. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, that's a Unity game like that. Yeah, Pro- probably would work on that, the Switch. That made me realize that Ori hadn't been ported to the Switch yet, yeah. which I just assumed because that was in my brain one of those perfect Switch games. Yeah, but again, I mean, that is a Microsoft published game. You know, yeah. like that traditionally business wise, that would never happen. But it sounds like also, I mean, you know, like Microsoft what? puts has put apps on Macs and they don't have a phone anymore, so they put apps. Yeah, on totally, Android and totally. IOS but like, and, like but there's a difference between Minecraft and Ori, you know, because like Minecraft is so big, you have to put it sure. everywhere. Like Ori is more of like this prestige thing of like, hey, this is a beloved game. Yeah, we should put this on the Switch, even though it's not the most the highest selling thing ever. Um, put Jack Grind Radio on Switch. I think I, I I saw people talking about Cuphead, but I don't know if that was just sort of spitballing of like what are some other games they could bring over. Right. But that if that ran on a Switch, they well got enough, the, they got the cool. DLC coming, so maybe okay. that'd be a good time yeah. to um, do it. The only thing with the Switch stuff for me is the Switch, like you were just saying earlier, Jan or whoever mentioned that the yeah. Switch does analog, not have analog yeah. uh, triggers. Up. So I don't know, but I mean, how many games? Just enough of them require to wear, those, you know, like, like Forza, right? You would want it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like Forza Definitely. would be unplayable almost yeah. without. But it. most shooters, most shooters uh, are just more know, digital use, exactly. just like they're on off. Like with those elite controllers, you can put those, flip those trigger stops out, yes. and not pull them all the way anyway. Right? And, yeah. It's so maybe it's just a thing of curating games so that you're not getting into that situation. I don't know. Or releasing another controller. There are ways, I looked it up, there are ways to get an Xbox One controller working on a Switch. Like, mm-hmm. They're not super elegant at the moment, <laughs> but uh, maybe they'll come up with something there. And this is a big enough deal that you wonder if, like, would, you know, it, like, it, I wonder if you if you can get that working, does it read it as analog on the triggers? Oh, or is it just uh, read it as a digital, you know, button press? Like, like if the Switch can even... Right, so, yeah, I, I, so does Nintendo do a firmware update to properly support... Yeah. An Xbox controller, yeah, maybe so, <laughs> to coincide with this. I mean, like, those, those new that ones, sentence that you just said, like, imagine saying that a couple yeah, years ago. Right? Like, it's, it's, I mean, those new ones have Bluetooth, but, right? Like the Switch just uses Bluetooth for its controllers. Like, I exactly would assume they could make that work. So I, yeah, that'd be pretty we're, wild. We're, we're yeah, it's it's a weird time. Yeah. It's, it's fucking fascinating. Yes, uh, but but like the, I think the most interesting thing is like that rumor would be the sort of thing you would laugh out of hand and now now like, like I read that and went like oh yeah yeah of course yeah that yeah. yes that seems like a, a a thing they should do that's yes. a sensible f- thing to do for where we're at right now yep while we're talking about switch should we is this a good time to mention that pokemon thing real quick yeah they got like, Hell a, what yeah, is it, like it a is. 7 minute direct tomorrow or something 7 minute direct uh up until well the ongoing since last week they've been doing like these little travel style videos of like visit Kanto, visit Hoenn, and these are like the previous generations. Uh and it's been speculated that hey, this could be leading up to the next generation, possibly. Like the next Pokemon game, yes. like the yeah. big one. The teaser image, in fact, had three little Pokeballs huh. in it, implying huh. that it'd be three new starters. Yeah. That seems like a huge thing to just announce in like what is basically a long trailer and then <laughs> move on. But like, maybe they want to get it out there before E3. Maybe it wasn't ready for the last direct for yeah. whatever reason, or, I mean, but you know, they it, need to get ahead of the E3. Yeah, it, it does deserve its own spot Jan, you know yes. I, real real quick we don't have to talk about this super long but i i was reading a really lengthy discussion about pokemon let's go pikachu and kind of how you know revisiting those games show kind of how formulaic all of the pokemon games are it's very sure. much like you've got the eight bi- or so uh things you know you got three starters you got a rival blah blah do you think that they are going to break from that do you think they should break from that do you think like a console pokemon needs to really iterate on the formula or do you think it just needs to kind of hit those notes 
I mean, I I would love for them to break away from that, uh, but I honestly don't see them doing it. I see them playing it safe, at least for the first time they're going to hit like a, a main console like the Switch. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't see them deviating from the path too much. Uh, Ultra Sun and Moon. Uh, <sighs> see, the problem is they 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 do, they have two both of their feet on on both sides of like catering to the more casual players and also kind of catering and making it uh, like the hardcore competitive people creating an environment for them. I don't see Game Freak or Nintendo deviating from the path too much, at least at the first go, uh, just w- especially with how things can be received good or bad. Yeah. Like, honestly, I think like the biggest change they could make is having those first three starters not be fire, water, and <laughs> grass. Like, yeah. have it be a ghost, have it be a dragon, have it yeah. be ice. Um, and like, uh, because one little change to the formula could completely change the meta of that game completely. Just even totally. whether adding a new type to the existing that they already have or taking, making a Pokemon into a different type instead of whatever it was existing. Mm-hmm. Because now like, you know, a Pokemon could have two types or whatever, but what if one of them has three? Oh, and then shit. it's just balancing that. And it's like the weird balancing act of creating new great designs, good designs, uh, types, type combinations that haven't been implemented already and on top of fixing or trying to uh, change up the existing Pokemon. What about a, a, a group of, like a limited group of end game Pokemon where you can pick the second type? That'd be all. T- well, see, you can almost like a multi class. Have they done that already? Uh, there's like a mo- move called Hidden Power. Oh, okay. And that uh, doesn't necessarily go with the typing of the Pokemon. Mm. So, like, a fire type could learn a oh, okay. ground move. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's weird to say because, like, the last generation didn't add too many Pokemon to the competitive scene. It was just like maybe 10 out of the 100 they introduced. Mm-hmm. So, I think a, a big move would just to make this next generation actually matter in the long run. Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like with with this Detective Pikachu movie, there's like a bu- like a, a wave of Pokemon coming back yeah. that they should try and capitalize on. It seems like they're like, and, and I'm sure there are more than this, but it seems like there are two big buckets when it comes to Pokemon fans. You've got yeah. the people that are coming at it nostalgically that totally. would, would, would want three starters and, and, you know, the the Elite Four, like they want that experience again and again and again because they don't necessarily check in with every single game. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the competitive end where they don't really care about the campaign anyway because they just want to, they're playing it to get the Pokemon to go fight people with it. Yeah. And so, like, the the nature of the campaign matters significantly less. Yeah. Uh, so I wonder if, like, they don't really gain that much by making dramatic changes to the formula. Specifically of the story or just the, the structure. I feel like there's a third the set of, of Pokemon fans <laughs> like that I specifically would would put myself into which Mm -hmm. is like i was really interested in pokemon and then i dropped off specifically because it was kind of the The same same thing thing over and over again and i was like and i'm not competitive so i'm not going to go back in and just like see the new Pokemon. but if i heard like oh yeah they're doing the it's crazy open world thing like i'd be a little more interested to check it out but i feel like that wouldn't alienate a lot i think yeah for me it's like i you know i dropped off after gold and silver like largely for that reason Mm -hmm. but also i haven't really played one all the way through since yeah so if there was a good beautiful new pokemon game on the switch that was you know the the new visuals might actually be enough yeah uh, to to, for me to get and honestly that's if anything, I'm kind of selling, reselling myself on playing Let's Go, uh, which I still have not done. Uh, I think about it every time I turn on the Switch. It's right there, and I go like, oh, yeah, eh, not right now. Yeah, I think about it every Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll know tomorrow. Yes. Is that in the morning tomorrow? In the morning, yes. <clears throat> Seven whole minutes. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready. I hate, I hate that, that we've reached a point where they have to like set expectations yeah. around the length yeah. of time yeah. and all this other stuff. Like, like, hey, if it's not half an hour, people might be mad, you know, or yeah. whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. But they they get out there so specific with some of this stuff. Just they, just they, they need their audience, I guess. So, uh, as if all the uh, wheeling and dealing about the future of the Xbox platform wasn't weird enough, there's one more quick story here uh, where uh, the latest builds of Windows 10 that are going out to, is it Insiders? Is that the term? Yeah. The, the Windows Insider program. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Uh, the newest builds of Windows 10 have a bunch of Xbox One game infrastructure built into them. Yeah. That was not there before. Mm-hmm. Also, they were giving away a free copy of a weird special copy of State of Decay. Yeah. Like the first one mm-hmm. to people in this preview to test. That seems like it's built with these hooks in mind. Yeah. Well, so there's a bunch of weird stuff that people have dug into this and discovered. So for one thing, when you download that copy of State of Decay, it is not coming from the Windows Store CDN. It is coming from the Xbox One like, you're literally downloading the Xbox One game yeah. from the Xbox One distribution. And so they're, they're making Xbox One games yes. run natively yeah. on so PC. So there's stuff there. There's a couple of new drivers in here. There's Microsoft Gaming File System Driver and Microsoft Gaming Install Filter Driver mm-hmm. uh, that lets you work with the, what is it, .xvc is the right. format of the Xbox One yeah. game package yeah. installer. It's another Brad Sam's joint, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes, that dude has been going deep with this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Long story short, also there's like some PowerShell utilities you can use to work with those Xbox One package files. Point being, like they're you're basically getting the tools to make actual Xbox One games work on Windows. Or it seems like we're the direction they're going with. So this. this would benefit them on not having to necessarily like port their games yeah. to the PC, rather make the PC able to just just do yeah, take play what the Xbox games. already has. That's my understanding. Okay, because I, I was confused because they already have that UWP stuff that lets right. them get Xbox One games working on Windows pretty easily. I guess. Yeah, but, but this, this is this sounds this like more, more of a across the board, yeah, kind of a unifying move. This is the sort of stuff you do if you want to roll out Game Pass on PC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, Game Pass will presumably eventually morph into that kind of streaming solution and all that other stuff. Um, but, you know, like, the, the I think it was E3 last year when we were interviewing Phil Spencer. He said, like, yeah, you know, wouldn't necessarily sell a Game Pass subscription to a PC owner right now because right. there aren't a ton of games there. But if suddenly they're doing the work to make whatever Xbox One stuff run natively, yeah. like, that's, that's a, a, a better place for them to be. Totally. Uh, you have to wonder if they do 360. That is, that is 100% part of my biggest question is, yeah. can the 360 VM they have going on the Xbox One work with this? Right. Or, or original or, Xbox. Or, can, yeah. can we go yeah. all the way yeah. back? And Yeah, like if you get like 360 games on PC is almost a bigger deal than Xbox One games on PC. I wonder to, if that backwards compatibility stuff will fit into it at all. Like, you know, because like think about it, right? They're They're optimizing these old games to work for Xbox One then the next step would get those yeah. Xbox One. Well, the thing is, is I don't know that they're optimizing PC. the games. I think this is optimizing Windows to run. Right. I'm saying for like when they when they started oh, rolling sure, out sure, their sure. backwards compatibility stuff, yeah. it was like, so it's now A to right. B to yes. C. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Uh, yeah. I. Again, th- that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That yeah. seems like a thing yeah. they should probably do. Totally. It's, it, it, you know, it really feels like they're gearing up. Like, like you know, Obviously, they've been on the back foot against Sony. Totally. Uh, and it feels like they're really making strides here to try and, like, come in hot with... Not nece- they're like, hey, we don't have to necessarily win, quote, the console war at launch or whatever, like, when the next two big reveal consoles are out. If they have all these services in play already, they can just point to all this other shit. Like, if, yeah. they're, if their box is slightly less appealing than yeah. Sony's box, it won't matter because they've got... yeah. Yeah, they're, they're like, we, do we still sell a console? We still have one of those, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. If you, if you oh, want yeah, here one, it is. Yeah, if you want one, you go want ahead. one, old man. Go ahead. <laughs> but we'll just take your 10 bucks. Uh, the thing you wonder about here is like, you know, a PC can run a lot of those games better than an Xbox yeah. One can. Yeah. So it gets yeah. into weird so, like, performance stuff of yeah. like, will this game run smoother on a PC? Or you end up with like, okay, I've got two versions of this game installed. One's the native PC port and one's the Xbox One version. <laughs> right. Uh, that's weird too. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, definitely yeah. some weird stuff. And but. I mean, well, that's also them playing for the long run when suddenly, like, my PC in five years isn't going to run new PC games as well. Uh, sure. Yeah. I feel like this also gets into weird, like, business uh, kind of chest beating or bragging, where suddenly your install base is not just <laughs> Xbox <laughs> One everything. owners; <laughs> it is now anybody who has an Xbox or Windows 10 is part of our install base. <laughs> and then they get uh, and, and then they get out there and start quoting their numbers again. And then they yeah. get, yeah, and then they get it's to be like, like oh, 200% oh, by the way, higher. By the way, anyone who owns an iPhone, welcome. Right, <laughs> right. You know, Switch, yeah. iPhone, <laughs> welcome, PS4. Welcome to the two and a half billion Xbox customers. <laughs> but like, again, like that's the appeal of the streaming yeah, stuff totally. yeah. is yeah. like you, you bring that potential install like base as a publisher, from, like if I have yeah, a game, yeah, yeah. hell yeah, I want yeah, to you're, you know, and and that's then that becomes worrisome in a different, weirder way of just like, well, if if you can shoot for that potential install base, you're gonna make a game that can run on a stream, and 
does that mean, well, you know, do certain types of games not get made as often anymore because they every developer is like, well, we want to make our games mushier so that they can respond better in a video window for more types of players. Like, that's scary. Yeah. Uh, I think another another annoying phase of this transition is going to be what's happening with video streaming of like the land grab is going to set in. Yeah. Of every company is going to want to launch their service because now you know, it's like Disney just yanked all of their st- or they're about to yank all their right. stuff off Netflix because they're launching their own. Right. And like, you know, like EA, EA, EA already has doing their this. Thing. Ubisoft yeah. alluded to yes. getting into this game. Like if and, every yeah. every decent sized publisher wants to run their own service, no thanks. Right, and you know, EA sells non EA games on Origin right. today. Like that's uh, that's because, and then presumably like. like no, no EA game is ever going to be part of Game Pass because right. they want to sell it to you on their thing. I'm subscribing to Jay Z's game streaming service because <laughs> okay. I right. hear the fidelity is way better. I was going to say this is like the the launcher gold rush of a few years ago, totally. where it was like, oh, totally. now suddenly we're. Yeah. But now it's instead of just downloading a client, it's giving them five dollars a month yeah. every month. Yeah. It's gross. But yeah, you know, I switched from Apple Music and Spotify to back to Spotify back and forth a few times before yeah. deciding which one I liked. And, you know, like I, but I only see myself subscribing to one of those. Well, the music stuff is, seems like the ideal situation because they all basically have the same stuff, right? Like, yeah, there there, are, well, there's there, not really any there was exclusive. A, so there it so was some like, stuff that was like showing up exclusively on Apple Music okay. for a time. Yeah. Um, same and title also. Title, yeah, yeah. Oh, title sure, had, sure, had yes, stuff yes. exclusively too. But that kind of consumers away, didn't right? like it. Right. Right. Uh, and, so like and there, the, it's like, okay, maybe I'll sign up for the Google one because then I also get free YouTube Red with that. Like you have you have better choices around the business end of it because right. you know you're going to get the same music anywhere you go. Yeah. Like that's 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 what, well, I don't know if we'll ever get there with games though. But like Netflix has its, its exclusives. Yeah. Amazon yeah. Prime has theirs. Like, you know, yeah. presumably Microsoft games oh, will totally. be on its service yeah. and not on Google's. Yeah. And much like a Netflix, you know, it doesn't, it, you don't need to have constant home run games coming out. You just need one every once in a while that keeps people on the hook. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, well, last month I was fine with this game. This month there's not really anything, but next month there's another big coming, so I might as well stay on for another $5. And that's the sort of stuff that like I think brings back episodic games. Uh, yeah. If they can figure out a way to make sure that they're reliably hitting their release timing, Uh you know, if, if in the context of a subscription service, an episodic game makes way more sense. I mean, I, I, at that point, I almost feel like you have to do the Netflix thing of have them produce the entire season before any of it comes out. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Just have yeah. it. Re- yeah. Not, not, not necessarily put it all out at the same time like right. Netflix does, but have it all ready to go and just like drop one every week. For it's kind of what Amazon's doing with that Grand Tour right. racing right. thing right. Uh, is, is that, hey, you, you know, the, the episodes or the game updates every time they put out an episode of the TV show. Right. Because, you know, like the, the film and TV world has gotten very good at getting their productions in on schedule. Right. Yep. And games are a lot messier. So, like, maybe getting that stuff done ahead of time is the right way to go. What a weird situation. You can play that uh, Minecraft story game on Netflix, actually. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, yeah. it's slowly there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is going to be a strange couple of years for sure. Um,. Couple more quick stories. Uh, Square Enix announced through an earnings call that they are going to consolidate eleven of their business units down to four. Uh, they have clarified since then that will not involve a workforce reduction. Uh, it's just that they had a rough Q3. They yeah. did not have the best kind of second half of last year. Just cause four underperformed. Uh, profits were down sixty percent. <laughs> hmm. So. I don't know. Like I, I, I mostly bring this up just because, like, we talk about it at game of the year. You know, yeah. they've got they've had kind of a weird they've run of it for yeah. a little while. Squares a strange, yeah, like yeah. It, it feels like they never fully integrated the Western properties when they acquired IDOS. Right. Uh, they don't like they own a lot of shit. Yes. Like yeah. they own Taito. You know, like they they're Square Enix is the Space Invaders people now. <laughs> sure. You know, like there's just a lot of IP that they've accumulated too. Yeah. Have so, they said anything regarding Kingdom Hearts numbers? Uh, I don't. Oh, that's one I'm really curious on on what their expectations were, right? And and and, and what the, what did they like realistically? How many copies of that do they need to sell to break even after yeah. this many years? Yeah. Uh, Let's see. I'm seeing. You know, they put out some statements like fastest selling game in the franchise. Okay. Uh. I mean, any sort of positive statement from them is, is going to be really good based on like how they've talked about fucking Tomb Raider and, and Hitman in the past of like, yeah. oh yeah, those didn't. Yeah. The, they, they but sold I wonder, I, millions, you know, like, I, well, I don't know. I, I was going to say, I, I, 
I feel like all the discussion of Kingdom Hearts dried up, and maybe that's just just because people bought the game and finished it. And, and I feel like the discourse around thing, it just you know, got so like loud well, yeah, that sure. everyone burned out. Yeah, that's that's almost certainly part of it. But uh, let's see, I guess VG Charts says that it hit five million in like first couple weeks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, if that's if that number can be believed. Yeah, there. Yeah. This, I mean, that stuff is always a little fuzzy. Yes, definitely. Unless MPD comes Sounds out. like we got another Kingdom Hearts on the way. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, especially yeah. without... Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations, it's an MMO. Oh, man. Oh, it's man. a free-to-play phone game. Oh, they, we put they some got one of those already. Donald yeah. Duck-looking loot boxes in it. And but, Zoom Zooms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I ain't talking. Uh, Media Molecule got on the PlayStation blog last week to announce... Kind of the release date for Dreams. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Uh, which I have now lost. It's in this article. It's just spring, I think. Spring. I, 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 I swear they narrowed it down more than that. Okay. Maybe I'm... Maybe it is just spring. Is that beta closed? Can I... Yeah, not, the, nah. that's... Yeah, they, they shut that thing down. Poop. But the thing they're going to put out and sell uh, in the spring is kind of that. Mm. Uh, yeah, so the whole reason this is newsworthy is they straight up use the phrase early access for this. Right. Which... As far as I know, is the first time a Sony published game has ever been called early access. Sony published game, absolutely. Yeah, like Fortnite came out on PS4 and said early access right on the title screen. Yep. But PS4 does not have like a formal you know, category. Like, game yeah, preview, like, early access. Yeah, like they what, don't have you know, a label yeah. for that sort of thing. They don't have that in their store the way some other services do. I think it makes uh, sense for this game. You yeah. know, get, get the people who are really passionate about it hands-on early. They start making some cool shit. So for the more casual players... Yeah. By day one, yeah. they see the, the catalog of what's in there. And it sounds like the, the split will be, like, this maybe doesn't include the story mode and all the authored Media Molecule content. Yeah, that... they, they're not as, as clear as they could be about that in here. They basically just say, the wording is literally, early access won't have everything that the full version of Dreams will. But you'll get 100% of the same Dreams tools that we have used every day at Media Molecule to make our content. So they don't say exactly what's not going to be in there, but yeah. yeah. I would guess that, well, that reads to me as the story mode the thing yeah. is not in there, but the creator yeah, is there. That, that basically sounds like what this is. Uh, and they it, are, it helps them kind of continue to see the environment of, of like, hey, here's some cool shit for you to play when it does. Well, I mean, whatever. This is the release date for this game. Yes. Like, yeah. whatever. It's not, you know, when they release the story add on like Street Fighter did. <laughs> So you're out there, you you heard it here first. If you uh, if you're quick enough, you can create a better campaign to Dreams than the actual Dreams campaign. Yeah, and uh, get it out. Maybe there someone already has. Yeah. in that beta, <laughs> they are they are pretty uh, to their credit. They're pretty upfront in this thing uh, about like there is straight up a section titled "Who is Early Access for?" and they say if you participated in the beta and felt like Dreams wasn't fully featured enough for you yet, or you wanted more Media Molecule game content, then Early Access might not be for you. Like they flat out say, yeah. Like this is, it sounds like they, yeah, you know, they want to populate the game with cool stuff yeah, before a full. And like, I, yeah, honestly, I, you know, and, and so this is for me, like, I don't know that I'm going to create a ton of stuff. Maybe yeah. I'll, I'll try it. Um, cause that beta did have the tutorials in it. Okay. Um, but you'll be able to follow what other people are putting out. Exactly. There. Yeah. So, and, and that was the fun of it. Right. For, you know, we ran that stream and didn't fuck around with the beta and like, there was just a ton of really cool things to do yeah. there. Yeah. Also, also they so, mentioned all that content from the beta will come over. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, cool. It'll be sort of fleshed out even. I'm glad. From, also, it's 30 bucks. Wow. Oh. Which they don't say if that's like an introductory early access price or yeah. if that's just the price of Dreams. But yeah, it's twenty nine ninety nine. You can't put a price on Dreams. I guess not. Uh, 30 bucks in the U.S. You can't for put a price 40, on a mattress, though. 40 in yeah. Canada. And uh, you'd get $160 <laughs> off. Like the, I don't know. The price kind of changes what I guess my perception of what Sony thinks this game is. I, and like, it makes me wonder, like, how fleshed out the story stuff is, because right. they, they definitely talked about, like, hey, we're going to have a story that, you know, is, is, you know, similar in scope to something that, like, a little big planet would have. And, yeah. and that's cool. Like, I, you know, those stories were fun, and, and I could see myself playing through a story in Dreams and seeing the stuff they made. Yeah. Uh, I would like to experience that story. Um, yeah, I want to see how weird they think they could get with it, yeah. and then use that as a bar for how weird right. other people can. But get like, with I don't, it. I don't need that per se. Like, uh, it'd be cool to see that stuff and and see it in due time. But like, if you if you told me I could have paid right there for that beta and just kept it open, I would have done it. Wow. immediately. Like it, it's cool. Uh, and I would have loved to have had more time with it to maybe like take a stab at making something. But I don't know. 
my my favorite thing about if you haven't you know watched our stream, I, I really suggest you check it out. It, it has a lot of cool stuff. But I think my favorite thing in there is you could totally just be like an asset guy and be yeah. like, I yeah. make swords. I've made 180 <laughs> kick-ass yeah. swords, and you can use any of my swords, and it automatically credits you in the game. Totally. Like I yeah. used Ben's swords. Yeah, it's that's really cool to me. I want you to make swords. I'm gonna. Make I want some... Ben's swords to be the worst swords in the game. <laughs> so keyblades. Uh, yeah, that's not even a sword. That's a giant yeah, key. It's, you can't it's cut someone with a giant key. It would do key. bludgeoning damage, yeah. not it's piercing like or mace. stabbing damage. If the, like the maybe the grooves at the end of the key were sharpened up to a point, you could cut someone like an axe or I'm something. I'm not saying but... it wouldn't be an effective weapon. Sure, you could do some oh, damage yeah, with yeah, a yeah, no, blade, that's, look, sure. I, when I was at the anime convention, there was someone selling keyblades, and they were selling it in the same area as people selling swords. <laughs> so I get it. It's a weapon. But like, so's a fucking baseball bat. Yeah, and it's way cheaper than your fucking anime convention keyblade. I think it's more of a pole arm than a sword. <laughs> it's not long enough to be a pole arm. But I feel attacked. Uh, well, luckily we're attacking with keyblades, so don't worry too much. Did uh, does that beta have any of the like PlayStation Move based sculpting stuff yeah, they showed off years does. ago? That's in there. Yeah. Okay. Is that cool? Does that work? Or did, uh, you, did you try? It? Under- I did not try it, okay. but my understanding is that it is like a great way to sculpt stuff. Okay. That's cool. That seemed like the kind of thing that they may may have tested early on, and then as PlayStation Move stopped being a thing, didn't make and it. And then in, VR but... came out, and PlayStation yeah. Move is back. Yeah. And, um, uh, the beta did not have VR support in it, so I wonder if that'll be something they add at this point, or if that's said, something that comes later. Yeah, it is going to. It is going to yeah. have it. Wow. This is yeah. This is a cool project. I, mean, I haven't even seen it. It just that beta. It, it sounded ambitious in a way that it was just like, all right. Like I feel like every time I saw Dreams until E3 last year, it was like, all right. I I don't like you're talking a lot and. And I played Little Big Planet, and I don't know that I buy it. <laughs> well, so uh, but then between the beta and and seeing it at E three, like I'm like, okay, no, this is fucking rad. My my assumption, having not seen it, like tell me if I'm wrong, is it's basically Little Big, Big Planet, but not constrained to just the format of a platformer. Yeah, like can it can it can it kind of but just can, be anything? You can sculpt a lot of different stuff and make your own shit. You know, right. so, but in terms yeah. of like game mechanics, like you're yeah, yeah we played like worse. a third person air like plane shooter. Yeah, we played a fighting game. We like there was, like there a, was a lot of platformers, clone. sure, yeah, okay. but yeah, a lot of platforming and and well, you know there was Toilet Simulator, which was okay. uh, great, okay, great. Uh, but yeah, it seemed like you could kind of do anything. There was like a Skyrim esque choose your own adventure thing. Yeah, that we and played. it's like you know it wasn't like huge, yeah. but like, you know, but people made first person shooters and and against AI. And, yeah, you know, there's yeah, yeah, there's a lot of really neat stuff. That's cool. Uh, and and I'm happy that it's getting out there sooner rather than later because yeah. I I came out of that beta going like man I really want to spend more time doing this yeah that's so that sounds like a smart way to go for them yeah uh but I I wonder if like I don't know that that's this is going to lead to like the PlayStation Store suddenly having an early access tab or anything like that well you know keep in mind a lot of the stuff that developers want to do that that platform holders say no to. Like as soon as they open the door themselves, it's a lot easier to get that waiver to to be like, "Hey, you fucking did it." Sure. And the, I, my understanding is that the "Hey, you fucking did it" defense works a lot, okay, uh, and has for some time. Okay. Yeah, so. maybe, maybe this does kind of pave pave the road for that to happen. Um, classic "Hey, you fucking did it" defense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a couple more stories, real fast. Uh, the horror game Devotion on Steam, which I just like randomly saw last week and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Uh, developed in Taiwan. Has been pulled from Steam. Too scary. <laughs> uh, I hear it's PT-like, so oh. maybe. Um, but actually, it was hard to tell at first from like the headlines and the reporting on this who pulled the game. Yeah. It sounds like ultimately it was at least... Based on the messaging coming out of the developer, it sounds like it was the developer's decision to pull it. Yeah, yeah initially we were talking about this, and it was like it yeah. definitely sounded like Valve forced their hand. Right. So but the the point of contention is that there was artwork in the game. I don't know what form it took. If it was like a poster, or it what. was like two little posters side okay. by side. Okay. So there's there's posters in the game, basically making reference to the internet meme uh, about Chinese President Xi Jinping resembling Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Which he apparently does not appreciate much at all. Uh. So, yeah, like when this first started flying around yesterday, your your knee jerk assumption was like, like a fucking valve bowing to the whims of foreign autocrat. And it was especially weird if, if you've been following if you've been following the Dota stuff at all with like right. them like valve 
banning a player from entering in a tournament because of some shit he said about yeah. Chinese players and stuff. Right. And like, oh yeah, like this is Valve again, just buckling under pressure from the government. But yeah, also also that that meme is apparently heavily censored on. Oh yeah, Chinese internet like government censors go after it. Pretty so this led to the game getting like review bombed by so, Chinese users. So that users, was that right? was that was the key thing. Once you dug in and realized like oh maybe the developer actually was just responding to this like kind of bad publicity situation. And they took it out of the game. I thought. Well, didn't they? The game's not back or not up, not back up as of yet. Okay. Last I checked, uh, but they did. I mean, they talked around it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> they refer to it as an art material incident. <laughs> like they don't come out and flat out say, hey, this was the offending thing. We had a uh, heated art moment. Yes. <laughs> That's the kind of how they, how they talk about it. So I don't know. I don't know if this was just like one artist slipped this in without anybody else noticing. Hmm. Uh, and the management of the company is not happy about it or if they're just reacting to the. Or maybe they were all on board with it. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. So I mean, yeah, was... they got completely review bombed. It was like generally positive and then it went to very negative. Yeah. 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 I mean, my understanding is there's not a, a lot of love lost between Taiwan and the Chinese government. Right. So maybe they maybe they all were on board with it yeah. until they saw the reaction. And they're like, oh, this is actually a bad business move, it turns out. Yeah, that's, that's possible. But I mean, the good news is it sounds like the game is coming back. Okay. Uh, they also mentioned they're going to do some extra QA on it. In addition to dealing uh, with the art material, well, well, we got it down. Yeah, <laughs> might as well. Uh, yeah. It was it was a bummer yesterday though because I had seen people like it was, some buzz was starting to pick up about this game. Like, right, I'd seen some people on Twitter last week saying like, "Hey, this thing's really good. Like, you should actually totally look at this if you like horror games." Uh, so, fingers crossed, this all works out and it comes back. Um, and then you can download an uncensored patch. To that's right. Add that. Bring hot. bring back the poo. We created in dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Add that hot political commentary back into the game. Uh, which brings us to our last story. Uh, this tweet went out on the THQ Nordic Twitter account this morning at 9.34 a.m. We're doing an 8 chan THQ Nordic Tweet of the Week. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the company's history, probably, at this point. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing an 8 chan AMA, and we have no idea why. Come join us. Neither do we, THQ Nordic. Neither do we. Yeah. Uh, some amount of time later, they posted a follow-up tweet saying, The opportunity was here and we took it. We got approached in a very friendly and polite manner and were assured said person, shout out to Mark. Shout out to Mark. We'll take care of the nasty stuff. So here we are. Did they basically then just read out the Triple H, my friend Mark promo? Probably. Okay. Hey, Brad, why why might I be familiar with that website? Why would that website be uh, no notable? Because it's an image board that exists in large part because 4chan started cracking down on child porn, among other things. No, why would I know that website? I, <laughs> Brad, what are you trying to say? I don't yeah, I'm trying to say that. Yeah, maybe... Darksiders is just not finding its target audience. Yeah. Who do you think would be into this? I don't know. It's People a... love child pornography. It's a website that is blacklisted by Google, mm -hmm. uh, blacklisted by several ISPs. Uh -huh. Not not exactly the go to choice, I would say, for your uh, safe. Like PR is about making smart, safe decisions, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I've never been technically in a PR role, but from what I understand, is you don't want to like go with anything too controversial or out there, or unless you're trying to make a statement. Yeah. <laughs> what statement but, are you uh, making in this situation? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I'm you know that they're gonna bring the Gal Gun games over to no, I don't know. Um, yeah. This just seems like a dumb fucking idea, yeah. and then they kind of they it's they simultaneously apologized and kind of doubled down. Like the the stuff they were posting in there seemed like they were fully aware they of were, what. Oh that, yeah, they the, were that, certainly that, leaning into. They were memeing it up. Yeah, finally. Yes, love memes. We need to get more of them. <laughs> uh, and then but you then, know, liking yeah. some tweets so that were like you know like yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> yeah, these people are too sensitive. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. How dare these people have a negative opinion of child pornography? Like, yeah, okay, that's that's the that's the direction you're going in, huh? Yeah, sure. they, they, they definitely sure. they seem to be leaning into that stuff on the AMA from what I saw in screenshots going around. But then, yeah, they also posted 
uh, what seems like a fairly dire apology <laughs> on their Twitter account about the same time. Mm -hmm. A couple hours after the initial tweet went out. Uh, this is in quotes on their company account. I personally agreed to this AMA without doing my proper due diligence to understand the history and the controversy of the site. I do not condone child pornography, white supremacy, or racism in any shape or form. I am terribly sorry for the short-sightedness of my decision and promise to be far more vigorous in my assessment of these activities in the future. This was not about being edgy. This blew up, and I very much regret to have done it in the first place. Signed, Philip Brock, PR and Marketing Director, THQ Nordic in Vienna, Austria. Also, shout-outs to Mark. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I tried Googling the website, and I couldn't even find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, there might be something to that. I think there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, you know, so then was someone below this person responsible for this? You, you have to imagine it's some, like, you know... Yes. Like, yeah. I don't even think it necessarily had to be somebody. I think it legitimately was them reaching out to THQ saying, we want to host you for an AMA. They probably read that email, thought like Reddit, thought it would just be like a nor – I'm giving them a huge benefit of a doubt here. But I could see as somebody who's worked in a corporate atmosphere how this gets like passed around the chain without key pieces of information. But like – just along the way, somebody at the top needs to like do like this guy says he didn't do his his diligence. He d he didn't figure out what the website was, and that's that's he the says that. There. But then when again when you look at some of the stuff they were actually posting in the AMA, like it kind of well, I feel like that dude is not that. posting at all in the AMA. I feel yeah, like it's right. the yeah, same I mean, maybe, low level people. Maybe so. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like I could see how this happens in a twisted way. I think it's still like completely shitty. And not not a good look for your company, especially like the internet is already such a fucking toxic place that you don't need to make the discourse around your game even more toxic when people are going to find a way to do that already. Yeah, yeah. It's just at, it's like pouring gasoline on a fire at a point. Sure. And for what end? Like to get people riled up about what's their game? The the. Darksiders. Gosh, they, what they is there? Well, that's, that's the, the last most recent thing, thing they, they put, put out, out, I guess. The, the, the What's their next? Not, not Cyberpunk. The, like, Mutant. Oh, uh, Bio, oh Destroy Bio? All Humans came up in one of the posts. Are you talking about right? Biomutant? Yeah, is that? Oh, okay. Yes, I they think are. Biomutant is. Yes, they are. They are, they are putting that out. That looks kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what else they have going on right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Neither are they, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> They've been buying IPs up. Yeah. They've got like time splitters. Yeah. They got the Kingdoms of Amalur license. Ooh. Uh, so maybe some synergy there. <laughs> anyway. Um, Just give, yeah. Give it back to like, Rhode Island stole this from you, sir. Yep. That's right. It's theft. What a weird fucking world life. life. Yeah. Yes. Everything is strange. Nothing makes sense anymore. I can't wait for their uh, Elon Musk account takeover. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm curious to see if that guy still has a job in the next couple days or where I, they go with this from, from here out. I, yeah. I, it's, you know, I think back to some of the people I talked to at publishers around the early days of Gamergate and you know, like I remember one conversation I had with someone over lunch. They're like, "So what? What do you, you make this Gamergate thing? Is this is this a big deal? No, no, no one internally is talking about it at all." And I was like, "Yeah, it's kind of a big thing. <laughs> it's a it's kind of a a big garbage fire about like yeah, I don't know necessarily affects your games per se, but yeah, no, it's a very nightmarish fucking hellscape uh, for people. It's a targeted harassment campaign. Like, oh, oh okay, yeah." Like, so, you know, at some point, I think executives are executives yeah. and they're oblivious to everything, not totally. just the stuff going on in their industry, but the stuff going on around the world. Yes. yes. Um, people, people in high and lofty positions. And so if you've got someone remarkably, yeah, so, uh, yeah unaware. Totally so deaf. if you've got someone like a little closer to the ground in your organization who happens to be a shitlord and they're like, yeah, man, hey, chan let's do it. You know, like I, I see how something like that could happen. So yeah. that's, that's the. I, it's yeah i don't know it's bizarre uh but you know people need to pay attention yeah about what they're doing with themselves yes absolutely all that being said mark if you're out there drop us a line <laughs> well social media help, man. <laughs> oh, i can get some yeah when, 
when you're the PR and marketing director of a publisher and you were out there saying, I do not condone child pornography or white supremacy, you fucked up. You've maybe <laughs> committed a grievous error. Gosh, we, how did this happen? This is not how I envisioned today but going. You yeah. know what? I've not seen a lot of other publishers out there today that's saying that they stand point. against child that's pornography. True. That's a good point. That's true. That is a good point. All right, that's it for news. What a week. Uh, we're going to take one more super fast break and we'll be right back and read a few emails. All right, let's take this thing home with a few emails that were sent to podcast.jibon.com. Hooray! Yes. It's a delightful email address. Your land of email. Your it's, email. It's an old workhorse of an email address. Mm -hmm. Been around for a while. Oh, yeah. It's putting in work. Yep. Uh, first email is signed concerned roommate. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. <laughs> this past week, I was watching the quick look for Tetris 99. My 28-year-old roommate happened to be in the room and after a couple minutes of watching asked, so what, you match the colors? Slightly dismissively, I replied, what? no, no, nah, it's just Tetris. After a few seconds of silence, I looked back to see a blank expression on his face. I said, Tetris? The blank expression continued. I then explained the general rules of the game and long story short, my roommate who plays video games enough to at least own every generation of PlayStation has somehow made it 20 years on this, 28 years on this earth without knowing what Tetris is. To be clear, he wasn't joking. That kind of joke isn't really in his wheelhouse, and there was no punchline here anyways. He genuinely didn't know what Tetris is. Okay, what? So what year? Okay, 28 should, years should, old. What year was this? Was 91. This? 91 or 90. Okay. So Game Boy Tetris is older than him. Yeah, but not but, by much. But, but just barely. But, but like, so that means like by the time he was old enough to start playing games, Game Boy Tetris would have faded away. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah okay. So and I feel like there's, there's, an an, there's a Tetris lull. So he's getting in on PS1, which yeah. is... Let's, let's assume that he's never owned anything but PlayStations. Have there been okay. any like real standout PlayStation Tetrises? No. At all? I'm going to say no. Until Tetris Effect? Yeah. But like, there's the Tetris Arcade machine that I've seen plenty of times. Tetris is like... There's I don't know that, that I've Futurama. seen a ton of, of Tetris arcade machines, honestly. Same. Like yeah. I, you know, I know I've, those games exist. They have it, it at the at the. Uh, they have one here, but, but like, even the old Atari Tetris that was in arcades, like I think I saw that cabinet once. Like uh, as a cultural reference, yeah, I mean that, that yeah. episode of Futurama. There's like a million. That's it's Tetris. They'd be like, you walk in on somebody watching The Sopranos, and you're like, what is this? Uh, well, so like a Godfather like a TV show? Like, what's yeah. going on here? This is like family, like this is a sitcom or something. It's, but that's not even, that's even more narrow. Tetris. Yeah. Well, the concept of matching stuff is kind of there. So maybe he just also he was a big Puyo Puyo guy. Also, yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing against his roommate, but how do you watch like a minute or two of Tetris and think that it's based on colors <laughs> and not? Well, you know, maybe it was a, a minute or two where no lines were being made. Uh, maybe so, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. As someone turning twenty eight this year, I I can't get down with it. You know, there's I don't no think, possible way. So I don't what, think what I was your first? In, what was your introduction to Tetris? I uh, Game Boy. I, there was yeah, the Game Boy one. Okay. And Uncle showed me his Game Boy and was mm. like, "Hey, learn." Yeah. I here. mean, even I yeah. was playing Tetris Live. Attack before I was playing normal Tetris, but yeah. I still knew what normal Tetris was. And right. the Tetris DS was such a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. elementary school. Yeah. So maybe this kid didn't grow up around games. Wait, did you just say Tetris DS in elementary school? I, I the math is okay. You know, okay, no, I was we're just near the sure. same age. I, yeah, I, I know. Well, I if, he was, if he was, that. he was born in the early '90s and he had a PlayStation One. He either got one as a little kid or got right. one, or got one way late. So just maybe never got into handheld games. Your roommate you know? is gaslighting you. This is a long mm. con. Yeah. He's going to kill you in your sleep. You know what? I, and I now this email is gaslighting us, <laughs> and I don't appreciate it. I, what I would love to know is if this person is familiar with other like block dropping puzzle games and just not Tetris. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm a like, big yeah. columns yeah, guy. Yeah, what if he's like a huge <laughs> Luminous fan? Oh, is this like Hatris? <laughs> <laughs> they made a Hatris without hats. <sighs> Why even bother? It says hats right in the name. I only play Yoshi's Cookie. <laughs> oh boy, I'm a pro Yoko fan. Yoko's Island. Daniel in DC. Danny DC. If you could, would you go back in time and switch out the voice of Charles Martinet for Mario to the voice of the actor who played Mario in Hotel Mario? Mm. Assume all Mario related games came out as normal in that time, but instead of a joyous, high pitched voice yelling Mario Tennis or whatever, you have a gravelly New York accent. 
Easily. Mm, the Nothing. problem the problem if you lose Martinet, you also lose Waluigi, Wario, and Luigi. Ah, you want to lose Waluigi, I'm ready. Any day. <laughs> he, he did just say Mario. I think you can assume you could still have Charles Martinet do all the other stuff. Oh, but, but okay. But, okay, but then is Charles Martinet doing like twists on the original Mario voice? <laughs> mm. On that Mario voice? Or are those other voices still unchanged? Because you know, know it's like can the, we get can we get like a second of Hotel Mario? Because I'm having trouble exactly placing what that voice is. I think I think Jan's on the case, but like if it, yeah, if we were starting with gravelly, then then what is Wario? Because Wario is just a more gravelly yeah. Mario. So is Wario like this? Yeah, maybe he's more demonic. Oh no, I shouldn't have done do that. Yeah. Do you want to turn that screen on? I know this is not a video podcast, but the princess to invite us over for a Oh my god. Day. Yes. I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look. It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumber. Pretty good. The Koopalings yeah. and I hey, have from taken Bowser. over the mic. Hey, uh, me and uh, Luigi are going to go over the Gino. One of my seven Forget Koopa about hotels. it. <laughs> I dare what you is the matter with you? you? We gotta find the princess. That is a spicy and meatball. You gotta help us. If you need instructions oh, on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. What? <laughs> Luigi's like, wait, what? What instruction book? I like the, video, the name of this video is High Quality Hotel Mario. There's uh -huh. nothing high quality about what we just saw. Yeah. Oh, we can download all of them from this Mediafire <laughs> website. Ah, oh, good. Before I had heard the voice, I was on board, but once I've heard it, I don't know. I feel like it's maybe not going far enough for my taste. Yeah. You want a gritty reboot of Mario. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I want a down on his luck, like beer swilling. Ca you want Captain Lou Albano. Yeah. Yes, basically, yes. That is yeah. my childhood Mario. Uh huh. Now that's a my Mario. Every morning before school. If you had to have a permanent Mario, would you rather have the Captain Lou Albano or the movie Mario? Mm -hmm. Captain, Captain oh. Lou, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 He movie, didn't. Movie Mario, not, not a. Because he wasn't even, he was just in the end credits, right? Swing your arms. Well, no, he was in the show. Yeah, there, there oh, yeah. were like okay. live action bits around oh, yeah. the cartoons. Yeah. So. Uh, he didn't do the rubber bands on that show, did he? No, I didn't think so. No, uh, That'd be too they, good. Did they do the live action Mario rapper on Zelda days? I can't remember because every at least every where Fri I live, Fridays every Friday was, Fri was, Friday Zelda, was day, Zelda day, and, and I don't remember if like if Mario. No, I think there were did, still did Mario throw to Zelda or. Hmm, I don't remember. I that's huh. Excuse me, princess. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Classic. Children, I want Link to start talking, program. and I want it to sound exactly like that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, excuse me, princess. There you go. Yeah, like real Urkel style. That's the one. Like a post Urkel Did I link. Do that? Yeah. That's the one. I had a, a Urkel talking Urkel doll, and I, so I, I didn't watch Family Matters, so I don't really know too much about Urkel other than what the, the you pull the string on this Urkel doll and what it would say. And one of the things he said was like, "Can I have some cheese? Got any cheese? Yep. Got yeah. any cheese? Is that a thing?" He loves okay. cheese. Okay, he would um, always go over to their house and eat, eat, eat Carl Winslow's cheese. That's fucked up. What's, Ruining that family. What is he's so life. plugged up? What's supposed to be nerdy about eating cheese? What's well, cheese good? Yeah, I don't know. but he was just eating like blocks of cheese, okay. like some sort of Word. dweeb. <laughs> well, I guess I'm a fucking huge <laughs> dweeb. Uh, Nathan from Tumwater, Washington. Hi. Why does February always seem so short? I got uh, a fucking mind blower for you. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna blow the mind off of it. It's because it is the shortest month whoa, of the months. Whoa! Wow. By default, there are twenty-eight days. Oh man, yeah, that's right. right. That was the last time I used that button. That's good no. <laughs> okay, I forbid you to not use that button. That's good is to it, know. Is it just me, or does it feel like every fourth February is slightly longer than all the other God, ones? God, I know, I right? That. Ugh. It's the weirdest thing. I don't even know how I remember four years back. <laughs> It's like every year where there's the Olympics. <laughs> that joke works better when <laughs> Olympics was only every four years instead of every two. Mm. But Je Jeff, are you excited that Goku is an official ambassador of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics? Yes. Good. Yeah, he. Uh, I bet he could throw a shot put real good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even have to, like, go Super Saiyan. He'd probably yeah. just do it normal. Like, he could do, like, I feel like long jump he would be good at. Yeah, uh, javelin toss. I think he would be pretty good at. Yeah, the hammer throw. I bet he would fuck up and throw it behind him or something. He'd, he'd screw that up. Yeah, I feel like he'd mess up hurdles. Yeah, I feel oh, like yeah, he'd yeah. that's trip over them and just be like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's your that's classic. exactly. <laughs> hey, I'm Goku. Uh, here is CJ from Nashville. 
with an email entitled Sean Koontz is awesome. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. Yeah. Yes. Sean, Accurate. Sean Koontz showed up at one of my gigs in downtown Nashville today. He stayed for most of the show and was the life of the party. He danced with almost everyone in the bar, got the crowd riled up and clapped and cheered for everything we did. When I realized who he was, he gave me a big hug and showed me his giant bomb hoodie. What a guy. Do you guys have any fun stories of meeting fans out in the wild or any more fun stories of partying with Sean? Sean Coons is one of the most positive and fun people that he I think I have ever met. Yeah. So, uh, like the, one of those people that lights up a room as soon as he walks into yeah, it. Definitely. Yes. He's, a, he's a fun guy. Mm -hmm. Super nice. I have one Sean Coons story. <laughs> it's, the, and, uh, it's the only time I ever saw Sean Coons angry. Oh, man. Um, I can't, I can't even picture that. Like, I don't, I don't know that I want to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was honestly shattering for me to see as, as, a, as a young intern. Uh, this was back in the, in the old days of Whiskey Media when I was there. Uh, there was an NBA Jam cabinet uh, over in the, like, kind of bar area. Mm -hmm. And during lunch, the engineers would sometimes play a like, game or two. Uh, and so I got kind of looped into it a little bit cause I liked it and I was playing, it was, uh, me and Andy McCurdy against, uh, Dave and Sean mm -hmm. and classically Dave, I think Dave and Sean were like just the best and would kind of always just win, um, when they played like engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to say McCurdy was no slouch. McCurdy right? was but good. I, McCurdy I was definitely I, good. I didn't watch them play a ton. Uh, but. but I guess whoever would play regularly with McCurdy was much less good than everyone else. But uh, I was kind of there and holding my own and everyone was surprised. And uh, we won. And Sean Koontz just like get, let out just a really just like ah! and like walked out of the room. And all of us were shocked. Because it wasn't like you would like get really mad. It was yeah. just like a – it was – slightly below very positive yeah. but that was enough that everyone was just oh, like man. oh god and I felt so bad <laughs> I felt like he was gonna hate me I felt like I ruined the engineers like chemistry with each other because I'm yeah. just like asshole he's gonna be and also this was back when I was like 3 30 probably and I was just like sweating my balls I was oh, like sure yeah. shreds and sweat just like all over my gross t-shirt and just like Oh man, because it got hot in there. Yeah, that, uh, that back bar. Real hate, heated, heated it was moment. like it was moldy and gross, and probably yeah, not it was safe. below. It was uh, below the the water. Like the water table was too high in that yeah. area, so it was just damp in there constantly. Yeah, um, and, and so I, you, I you'd see water like running down the walls again. of yeah. it. Yep. Uh, that NBA Jam machine is in my garage. <sighs> I never played again after that day, just because. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you you want to buy that NBA Jam cabinet off me? Uh, no. Okay. I don't should, think it will fit in my apartment. Go text. Go Fair text Koontz and see if he wants a rematch <laughs> yeah. after this. Uh, Dan in Edinburgh. Have any of you ever heard of the Casio Loopy? Yes. A short-lived Japanese console targeted at girls in the mid-90s that featured a built-in thermal printer. What? It, it failed terribly, but the design of the console itself is pretty cool, and the logo is cute. Uh, in all the talk about weird Japanese consoles like the Marty and the Wonder Swan, I have never heard of the Loopy before. Just wondering if any of you had come across one or even played one. I am aware of it, but I I don't have much more to say about yeah, it. Yeah, it has a printer built in, and yeah, it's a lot of like, hey, print out some stickers yeah, or you can print screenshots. Yeah, you print screenshots of yeah. games, which is a fucking cool so idea. So I think some of it is like art of like take a picture and draw over it and then print the whole thing out. Yeah. I think is is some of okay. that. Okay, but it's a cool looking console. Like I pulled up. There's a, there's also there's an incredibly high res photo of it on uh, <laughs> Wikipedia. Beautiful. Uh, it's a really nice looking thing. Uh, it's kind of like a Saturn almost. But it's but like an gray. XI or something. It does yeah. look very mid-90s. But uh, yeah, I never heard of one of these before. Yeah. I didn't even know Casio did video games in the, at any point. Mm. <laughs> but the idea of being able to print stuff out of your games is... Uh, Worked for the Game Boy printer. I mean, uh, not cool. that, that was I wonder a little if, different. Any idea how much one of those would run you? The Game I Boy feel printers? like I looked at a... No, uh, no. a loopy. <laughs> I feel like I looked up loopies last year sometime. And <laughs> we're like, ah, that's too much for me to get as a joke. Two seventy five. Yeah, too much for me on, to get on as a eBay. Joke. Uh, the bummer about the Game Boy printer is the film, uh, if left out, just goes bad. Right. Yeah. So the, it's the paper, really hard yeah. to find like good quality paper. Our, uh, well, it's thermal, just in general, like you know, yeah. if it's exposed, it it gets exposed. Yeah. Uh, our letter grades like pretty commonly understood in terms of old game. Like condition. condition and stuff like that. Generally. Okay. This listing says that the console is, is a B. Okay. Uh, let's see. Controller is a B plus. AC, AC adapter is a B plus. Right. 
the seal tape, a.k.a. sticker tape, is a little old and may not print properly. Well, it, it's similar to the Game Boy Pocket printer, except it's color, mm. is what this eBay auction listing says. Yeah. Uh, I think that's no games. I think that's just the console. That mm. is, yeah, it's maybe a little pricey. Yeah. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder what the emulation scene for the Loopy is like. I can tell you that I've got Loopy games on a hard drive somewhere. Whoa. We got to follow up on that. I don't know if anything runs them, though. Huh. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. May might, if anything does, it's it's just get in the Mister community and yeah, get, that get on the Discord and be like, the Loopy, drop everything. You I, could know, probably... I know you're trying to fix that Bimini Run audio <laughs> bug, but let me tell you about the Casio Loopy. <laughs> Arkanoid came out last night. Mister, huh. speaking of that, it's a good game. Yeah, Stuart from Norfolk, England, who has the best name, but I hate reading people's full names out unless they say that it's okay. Yeah. But it's a really good name. Let me look at it so I can verify one way or the other. Great name. Yep. It's Great fantastic. Name. Nice work. Uh, my friend Ben and I have argued for years as to whether Keanu Reeves or Nicolas Cage has the better body of acting work. We wanted to ask an esteemed panel of experts, but as we can't find one, what do you guys think? <laughs> it's a classic joke. I don't know if... I, is he asking which set of movies that they were in was better or which one is a better actor because those might be I think you could better answer both. body of work those might I be think different implies questions. Like, like better their, catalog but like just overall the movie not even their parts but body of work to well, me says I mean, like the work their that work, they do yes. yeah specifically like which one of them brings the most heat to the movies on a regular basis I, I, I love Keanu Reeves I don't know that he has a ton of range yeah I say Cage's highs are higher but his lows are lower <laughs> sure yeah. Keanu's more baseline I feel I feel like just in my heart without checking like Nicolas Cage has just done more yes well yeah he's got to pay the tax yeah right. <laughs> like he's you know and he's, he's he's in the hole you know yeah he's been doing it forever um I I gotta go Cage um, mm. but I really have been appreciating this the Keanu resurgence. I, and and also like all the stories you hear about him, he's like, oh, he just like every day would buy food for the entire crew. Yeah, he, and just, Keanu like, Reeves sounds like an amazing person. Genuinely so. nice and cool dude, and that's oh. always good to hear. I saw Dog Star once. <laughs> okay, did not stay for the full set. <laughs> mm. What are was it when they were at the Sonoma County yes. Fair? I, I was also, walking <laughs> past the because they were right by the entrance, and we were going in to watch the d demolition derby. And you just look and go, huh, that's that guy. All right. Yeah, okay. All right, Keanu Reeves. Welcome to Petaluma. Keep moving. Last time I saw Keanu Reeves on Twitter, it was to show that he has a library card and he was encouraging other people to go get their library cards. <laughs> that's a good call. Seems like a pretty good guy. Yeah. Uh, what are like three good Nicolas Cage movies besides The Obvious? Kick-Ass like, like, is actually like, pretty like, good. Like, don't say The Rock. I mean, like, what are some uh, less, <laughs> lesser known... I like Snake Eyes. Okay. Uh, Bad Lieutenant Treasure. 2, Port of Call, New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah, if you want to see some fucking acting, and I'll leave it at that and not qualify it any further than that. Raising Arizona is oh, my God, personal I favorite. I fucking forgot that he is uh, Academy Award winning actor Nicolas Cage. Yeah. I've never seen Leaving Las Vegas, but it's supposed to be like actually quite good, yes. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mandy, this last year was uh, probably my favorite movie of the year. My dad really likes Gone in 60 Seconds. Okay. <laughs> that one's fun. Yeah. All right. Mm. Yo, but Lake House, though? Keanu Reeves in that? Mm. Tearjerker. I, I love that movie. I remember liking Speed quite a bit. Speed's good. Speed's great. It since it came out. I like Con Air. Yeah. Face it's Off. I'm like, yeah, Face Off is fine. I don't have any passion for it. It's yeah, no, good, it's, but I don't, you know. It's, it's something that I watched once a long time ago and then once recently and I think I'll never see it again and yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, question from Drew. Was Lethal Enforcers good? I remember it being in the lobby of every supermarket and gas station growing up and always thought it was a really <laughs> bad game. I am not a fan. No. I, no it, it's, it I never... remember liking it a lot, but now I can't say why. I mean. Yeah, I just, it, it was never... Was the first one like modern day cops? Yes. And then the and second the one was second Wild one West. Was the Wild West. Is that right? I think okay. that's right. Okay, that sounds right. I don't think you would call a Wild West game lethal enforcers mm. out of Probably the gate. Not. Probably not. Brand recognition. Yeah. I don't know. I remember it being a totally adequate light gun game. Yeah. Yes. Adequate. Yeah. <laughs> I was more of an Area 51 kind yeah. of guy. Yeah. Because that felt like lightly interactive. It mm -hmm. wasn't all FMV or, you know, like it, it just, I don't know, it felt. 
like a little more. I liked yeah. Area 51. Of course, Time Crisis. Yeah. Um, what was the terrorism one that the Area 51? Target people? Terror. I liked Target Terror. Okay. Mm-hmm. Was Revolution X, anybody? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah, I will shoot that screen and get the keys. And <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's like all that fucking shit. Uh, I played through uh, Revolution X last year. I've actually never even played it. I don't know. If oh, dude, actually, the music is a weapon. You should check it out. That's true. Really, really good uh, one was the Terminator. Uh, yeah, like yes. Game. yes, that is a legitimately fun game. I like Operation Wolf. Yeah, I don't think I played much of it. It's hard. That's classic. I mean, that's like yeah, mid eighties. Yeah, something like that. Late eighties, eighty seven. But it's like that. to me that's the first game that has a gun mounted to base. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. The same way Terminator did. The, yeah. the same way Revolution X did. Yes. Operation Wolf is definitely the oldest light gun game I can God, I remember how fucking cool it was when you started to see more and more like gun controllers in arcades. And I was just like, I just, I loved the feel of like pointing a gun at a screen and being like, whoa, it's like I'm shooting the game. Do you yep. remember a light gun game that had like, God, it used holograms in some way? Like, this probably was around the time of Time Traveler. Like mm. like the scope was some kind of hologram contraption or something like that. Does that bring any bells? Was it like ghosts? I don't. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the there, SNK may- ghosts. Yeah. I I I think it was at one point at uh, Scandia. No, uh, Kuzar. Okay. Uh, God, I, I I've done I've done this exact thing before where I couldn't remember and I asked the audience and they got it and I forgot the name of it again. <laughs> But yes, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. It was like kind ghost, of a square looking gun squad. with a scope yeah, that ghost. had like a holographic ghost squad. Maybe ghost squad. Ghost squad. Squad? 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 squad. Ghost squad. I think at one point you're shooting ghosts on a pirate ship oh. or something. I Wait a minute. That's something else. Ghost squad is a light gun rail shooter arcade game developed and published by Sega. It's probably. Well, that is a light gun game. Yeah. And it's definitely the one we were thinking about. Thanks, yeah. everyone. It doesn't say anything about holograms, although the key art here says zero tolerance on terrorism. <laughs> so. Hell yeah. I don't know. Finally, video games making a statement. Not sure what's up with the Ghost Squad, but. Hmm. Uh, all right. Last email. <clears throat> uh, Jamal from Folsom, California. I've been reading about the Wii U modding scene and found out that there's a way to play GameCube games on the gamepad using the built-in screen. Thinking about the Wii U's ability to play every Nintendo home console that came before it and also being able to play those in bed had me thinking if maybe it'd be fun to mod the console. It's not like it gets much use anymore, and I'm not worried about losing access to online features. Uh, Miiverse has been bid farewell, and the two online games I'd care for, Mario Maker and Splatoon, have Switch counterparts. Uh, I've had similar thoughts about my new 3DS since it can play DS and GBA games. I'm having trouble pulling the trigger, though, because I'm not sure if it's something you can come back from. Uh, I sold the consoles and games I grew up with and totally regretted that. Uh, Sure, all those games are fairly easy to play in some form now, but when I think about the GameCube I had, I think about the boot-up sequence and the sounds the interface made when you didn't have a disc in. I never had a Saturn. I'm 19. This makes me feel incredibly old. Uh, But that anniversary stream you guys did made me want to get one, partly because the operating system seemed cozy. Yeah, that's the Saturn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't sold any consoles since because they're nice to just have around and I can go back to them in a moment's notice. Would modding my Wii U ruin the sanctity of the console when I think about going back to it a decade from now? Should I keep it vanilla for posterity? Would any of you repurpose your consoles like that or is there something holding you back from doing it like me? I feel like if I was going to do something like that, I would get another one. Yeah, I guess I could see that. You know, I've, I've actually get a used Wii U yeah. and do yeah. and, and filth it up. Yeah. Uh, Which you, I'm sure, can find at a very reasonable price. Yeah, probably. Right now. Yeah. Oh, actually, they're did you well, see that it's like new in box a, Wii U's yeah, are going up. There was a and, crazy and, yeah, spike in Wii U prices. But yeah, is, is that it's just like new collector-y in box? type stuff? Yeah, like, like, not like new in box Wii U's start going for, I think, like five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. I, I don't want to condone but, anything illegal, but I think it, like if ten years from now you came back to it and lo- loaded it up, and you're like, "Oh shit, I forgot I put all these fucking cool GameCube games on here," it'd be a nice little ple- ple- pleasant surprise, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't be thinking too much about the sanctity of the console. I mean, what is the legality? Like, I've got a box of legitimate GameCube games in my closet, and they legitimately purchased Wii U. Like, right? 
I, is that some kind of, is that fair use of you own all that stuff? So I would, I would assume so. I don't, I don't, I can't speak to what the process is of modding a Wii U. It's, if that involves, it's rough. If that involves well, you downloading copyrighted code. So it's kind of inherently illegal at the gate. Yeah. Um, I've, I've looked into it some cause I wanted to, I would like to play GameCube games on my Wii U. Yeah. But it's somewhat complicated. Yeah. Or it just it, seems like a pain. Right. Especially because you can't just put the discs in the system and play them. You have to dump the discs as well. Okay. And that gets. Can you dump them with a Wii U? No. Yeah. You need a Wii for that. Okay. Eh, that's. Yeah. Also, I think on the, I want to say on the Wii U, you need a copy of specific games to even get the. Oh, one the, of those. Emulator stuff on there in the first place. Like it's, it's a hassle. It sounds tricky. Yeah. Uh, I, you know. But I don't have, you know, the GameCube doesn't not, have it, HDMI out. So like it would be nice to have a way to play GameCube games on modern TVs. Sure. Uh, that works well, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, that all sounds interesting. I don't know. Like, I still envision myself playing original Mario Maker right up until I see what Mario Maker 2 is. Sure. Um, Wait, are you suggesting there's a world in which you think the first Mario Maker is better? It's always possible. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past oh. Nintendo to do something like that. Uh, actually, I, I'm going to read one more email about Mario Maker, but... It's been... Yeah, I... I if you uh, have anything else to say about this. I, you know, I... I yeah, I don't know that if you're coming back to it years later, you would be like, oh, man, because, you know, years later, the online service of the Wii U is only going to become more disconnected than right. it is now. Right. So the reasons to keep it pristine are usually to get it on the Internet and do stuff with it. But yeah. that's by the time, you know, you're you're coming back to it for that. Like, as long as it still plays real ass Wii U games when you yeah. still put a disc in it. Yeah. Like, don't the break ones the that core are, thing. Yeah, the, the ones that like are like, oh, now you can't do this thing anymore. Those are the ones that are always the hardest sells. Yeah. I modded an original Xbox, um, and the disk drive kind of died on it. Hmm. Um, so it was nice, because like, oh, I can't really put disks in this thing anymore, but it sure has an FTP client, and I can still <laughs> fuck around the hard drive, and like, there's still stuff to do with that Xbox. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Have you guys checked any of your original Xboxes, if you have them still, to see if the uh, is it some kind of capacitor, capacitor or something I exploded have exploded in there? I've, I've really been meaning to check mine. And I, I keep forgetting. somehow ended up with like, I'm going to say somewhere between five and 10 Xboxes. That's too many Xboxes. Some of them are debugs huh. and I should eh. probably cut the cap off of all mm -hmm. of them before something bad happens. Cause it sounds like that's a real problem. Yeah. Sounds like it's not every Xbox, but yeah. a lot of them. I have not seen ooze gooping out of any of them. <laughs> if that's what you're asking. Okay. But, uh, but I do, I, I still have one hooked up. Hit the button on that thing, see what happens. That's yeah. more like a hex box. Like somebody yeah, put a that's, curse on yeah, it. Yeah, that's yes. Slime curse. All right. Actual last email, I was reminded of this Gunged. when we talk about the possibility of which Mario Maker might be better because I had totally forgotten about all the interface stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's from Andy. Consider this. Nintendo releases a companion app, a second screen experience, let's say, that can connect to Mario Maker when the Switch is docked. Uh, on, a so on a small screen, maybe it just acts as a trackpad so you can control an on-screen cursor. But on a tablet, you could get a video stream. They have experience doing this from the Wii U. Or a simplified version of the game that is just the creator mode that sends the data of your block placement over to the console. How much nicer would it be to use an Apple Pencil on an iPad screen than use your finger or one of those awful capacitive rubber-tipped styluses? Yeah, that'd be better. I, I took my capacitive rubber tip stylus and tried to use it on the Switch screen uh, entering a store code uh, for trials over the no. weekend. Yeah. It didn't work well. No? No. Huh. It's like a it, it works great with an iPad. It works great with a phone, but I felt like I had to press way harder on huh. the Switch. Weird. Which was weird. Uh, so that doesn't seem like it'll be a great solution. Yeah, not, not a great uh, early sign for Mario Maker 2. Yeah. So I... um. That sounds like a totally, I, I think there are a dozen viable solutions to, you know, like making editing levels uh, docked uh, yeah. easy and fun and all the other stuff. I don't think they'll do any of them. <laughs> Great. Like the idea of them, like, yeah, yeah we, hey, we made a mobile app. Like, yeah. no. I mean, look, this, at their, look at their mobile app now. Yeah, totally. Like, no, totally. no. This, this is, this, yes, this sounds like a good idea that Nintendo would never pursue. Yeah. Because they're just not like that. I wonder if you can maybe do something with two switches you know how that you had the mario party party yeah. or super mario party whatever mm -hmm. combining switches thing maybe you could have like dock one but like connect them to dock one for tv mode and then the other one you can use as mm. a hmm. 
Let me ask. What if I USB a Wii U controller (laughs) into a tablet into it? Let me let me step back and ask this: If it weren't for the problem of getting video out, like capturing the video of creating the levels, would anybody even care about this? So I, I think specifically. My issue now is that I don't know that the touchscreen of the Switch is outstanding. Okay. It's not. Uh, okay. And, it's really and not so, like, that's even potentially an issue undocked. Okay. So this is more than just getting the full screen video feed of the creation out. Yeah, which I would I would like to do. Obviously, um, people want to stream yeah. level creation. Like, that's, yeah. that's well, what I Well, it's mean, like but, creating like, levels docked is a hassle if you don't have a touchscreen because you're drawing a lot of... Yeah. Uh, what what I mean is, if you didn't care about capturing the video, would you be fine just doing it handheld? But it sounds like oh. there are like interface and, concerns. And maybe I am. Like I yeah. think until we get our hands on it, we're just not going to know. Yeah, um, I mean, like that's a bigger screen than the Wii U tablet. Right. right. But like like I said, it just didn't, it, 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 it never felt great to me with my finger. I was playing some Tetris and, 99 and yeah. I was having like issues where I swear I was tapping on certain wells yeah. to target and it wow. was like, and I felt not, like I like I, I felt like I had to touch way harder with that stylus huh. than I do with any other thing I use that for. Do you guys have screen protectors? No. No. Huh. Interesting. So I I that that's my worry now after doing that is like oh geez what if this doesn't feel great? Like I've never noticed it before because at most I've used it for like tapping OK or like tapping right. a menu like a big block menu block or something, but. The trying to like frantically do it while I'm playing Tetris or something, and I'm like not exactly hitting it when I think I want to hit it, made me kind of question the the tech. I kind of like the idea that somebody floated a week or two ago of using the Joy-Con motion when it's docked, but then again, yeah, if the motion is not super accurate, then right, that could also yeah. get frustrating. What about plugging in a mouse? It's another thing right. that Nintendo probably won't do that yeah. I think would would go a long way. Make your own mouse, Nintendo. Yeah. They already did. Just put the Mario Paint mouse yep. back out. Yep. A USB <laughs> Mario Paint oh mouse. My God, dude, they should totally. What are we do doing? They should totally do that. What are we doing? <laughs> also, they should port original Mario Paint to the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make a new Mario Paint. Put old Mario Paint out. Super Mario Paint. I what if you have yeah. To, what if you have to build levels with Labo? Okay. Into yep. Mario Maker Two, uh-huh. or you just build a mouse using Labo? Yep. We built like that little critter thing. Great. Just we, use that. We have to stop this before Nintendo steals any of these ideas. That's right. Just, I'm, copyright, I'm mailing this podcast to myself. Yep. We're going to launch our own competing handheld That's TV right. hybrid console. <laughs> yeah. Put these ideas out on and that. And we're going to put Box Maker on it. That's right. Box Maker Box 2. Box Boy? Gonna, no, yes. Box Maker. Totally different thing. Yes. Not copyright. Original character. Do not steal. Yep. Also, check it out. Gianna Paint. It's great. <laughs> these are all good ideas. We're doing it. All right. That's Gianna it. Gianna Maker. <laughs> Somebody should really make Gianna Maker. <laughs> yeah. Why did... uh, yeah. An all idea right. whose time has come. Seriously. Uh, all right. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the email address. Send the emails there. That's it for emails and yeah. news and games. That's it for the podcast. That's right. Uh, after show. Not this week. No. We're going to take a, a pass on it. Okay. Uh, this week on account of Ben is still all fucked up. Okay. I got to go home and eat soup. All right. That sounds good. But fight me later. That's well, right. Yeah. With Pokemon. That's right. Yikes. Catch, catch Jan. Are you doing stream. doubles? Jan throwing down Always the Always doubles. You fight me in Pokemon, fight me in real life. How's that you going? See me. I, heard, I heard your first double stream was maybe a little Went rocky. terribly. You adapting at all? I'm adapting, constantly evolving. Nice. This train is not stopping. All right. Uh, uh, evolving. I see. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, I get, yeah, I get yeah, you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, don't press B. Don't press B. Let me, let me keep going. All right. Man. All right. Jan getting scrappy down there. Yeah. Got to do something. Ready to fight. Feisty. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, in that case, that's it for the Giant Bobcast for this week. We will have another one next week. We will see you then. Bye.